Welcome, friends, <clears throat> once again to another glorious episode of High Rollers D&D. Uh, I am your Dungeon Master, as always, Mark Sherlock Humes. And joining me this week, my good friends. Uh, we have Kim, Trot, Hello. Katie, Tom, and Rhiannon. <clears throat> Uh, joining us back. Hello. Hello, friends. I hope you are all well. Hello. Uh, it's a very Hello. sunny weekend, um, but we're inside to play some Dungeons and Dragons. And thank you for joining no. us. Chat. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no. Um, not many things to talk about uh, at the start this week, so we can rattle through them, get into the recap, <laughs> and then what? What are you laughing huh? at? What? Nothing. Carry on. Hmm. I've got. A question. Okay. Go. While you two stare at each other sensuously, um, can someone oh. change the overlay to the heroics <laughs> one? Thank you. Bye. <laughs> oh my god. I tried to do Tommy's it silently there. and stealthily, but now everybody knows, Kim. Now everyone <laughs> there knows. There you go. Everyone knows. Everyone knows that you didn't do it. You didn't do it. <laughs> Love you, Tom. <laughs> right. A couple of quick things um, before we get into the recap. Uh, so one thing I wanted to mention is both Knights of Evening Star, which is a new D&D show I DM for, and Strahd are back. Uh, so Strahd, we had an episode last week, and we'll be back this week as well. And then Knights yeah. of Evening Star, which is the new D&D show I'm doing with Anna Prosser and Mika Burton and Shady Penguin and Nate Wants a Battle. Ooh. That's back this Tuesday. It's at 12 o'clock at midnight <coughs> UK time, um, or I think 4 p.m. Pacific if you're in the U.S., um, that's on the D and D Twitch channel. It's not here. It's not on my channel. It's on the D and D Twitch channel and on the D and D YouTube channel. Curse of Strahd oh. is on High Rollers D and D every Thursday, 8 p.m. Come and check it out. You can wow. catch up on the episodes for Curse of Strahd on our YouTube channel. Um, it's been pretty yeah. good. It's gotten really spicy. Curse of Strahd. <laughs> you should definitely <laughs> be watching it. Um, <laughs> yes. Spicy is the word. <laughs> spicy. Tom, Tom yeah. is laughing oh. about how spicy mm. it is because it might be oh. spicy because of Tom. Picante. Um, I can't eat too much, or I'll poop. Also, <laughs> if you're wondering how <laughs> to support High Rollers. And mm. you don't have much finances right now because of lockdown, pandemic, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Tell your friends about Curse of Strahd. It's a good way to introduce them to us in a short term, like smaller yep. episode amount. <laughs> they can catch up and enjoy it. So maybe that's a good yep. introduction. That's something you can do to help us uh, without yep. spending any money at all. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Shorter Subscribe episodes. to the YouTube. Rate us on iTunes. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Twitch. You're asking too uh, much Follow us on now. Twitter. Twitter. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, seriously, though. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But they, those are all, like, genuinely things where if you want to support us, you don't have any much money, um, or if, even if you do, but you just don't want to spend it on us, that's fine. You can do all of those <laughs> other things, and it still helps us out. So <laughs> uh, you can do all of that as well. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. was going on there. It's absolutely true. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to spend money on us. <laughs> the no. other thing I wanted to mention as well is I wanted to say a big thank you to WizKids, um, particularly V, oh, yeah. um, who has sent us a ton of stuff lately. They've sent um, a whole load of Warlock tiles, but they sent us this boy, uh, this Chungus, uh, who's called the Chundalen Dragon. I, can't, I like calling him the Chonk Dalen dragon because he is chonky. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he's massive. That him. dragon is absolutely huge. Um, it's really mouth. well done, and it's part of the new Rhyme of the Frost Maiden module. But they also sent like you, we're not we can't use them because we're not in the studio. I want to get back to the studio, but we've got all the warlock tiles, which are like dungeon tile style mechanics. It's way cheap. I can't show them trots, so don't worry about full screen because it's all behind me in boxes. Um, okay, but bad. it's kind of like a dungeon tiles really easy to get set you know it's it's cheaper it's like a hundred dollars for like the base set get that and use that um why you like this why do you do this to me <laughs> you, like chris Tri is the one who's like oh i want it to look professional i want it to look all slick and nice and then he's like you know what i'm gonna do zoom in on mark while he's talking it's slick Enhance. and it's funny <laughs> right okay nice <laughs> um and i think that is it for this week uh no other major announcements go on chris Trot. uh the competition to win the bundle is still live that's just a link in chat it's still ongoing the yeah. winners will be announced when that's over that's it what to say about that yeah 
There's a, there's a command in chat with all the information on that. That's still ongoing. Whilst we lock down things uh, with D&D Beyond. So um, that's it. I think that is literally all of the announcements. So we're just going to jump straight into a Dun Duns and then a recap. Welcome back to Erois. <laughs> After... You can't do that. <laughs> what? Every week you know me. that Kit Tom wants to start the podcast. Every week. It wasn't After the dun -dun. No, It started <laughs> with a said <laughs> Seymour and then just fucking started. <laughs> well, then just get a better cut. I don't know. It's not me. Not my fault. <laughs> my fault. It's my problem. It's Tom's problem. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Last time. On Erois, after losing in a battle of wits and treachery to the demon prince Gratz, our party made a desperate escape from Azagrat, the pleasure planet. Aided by matron mother Ilhares and her Lolth worshippers, the party infiltrated the astral port where their ship was docked. And with careful planning and clever tactics, they dispatched the guards, freed their ship, and made their way back out into the vastness of astral space ready to complete their journey home to the material world of Erois. Two main obstacles stand in their way, however. A region of astral plane called the Shifting Straits and the powerful Sunship that protects Erois from all invaders. The dangers of both are still unknown. Finally, Nova used the spell Dream to contact Valor, the young girl the party protected when their advent adventures first began, and who was revealed to be the daughter of Callus Valkyrian the enemy, uh, their enemy. Valor implored Nova to come and free her and take her back to Erois just as the dream ended. Uh, and that is literally where we begin this week. Uh, mm. The low, mm. powerful rumble of the twin star longbows, infernal engines, churns in the background. The sleek metal and crystalline walls pulse with arcane power as the ship makes its way through astral space. Uh, heading in the known, what is believed to be, the location of Erois. Um, you guys do have a couple of days, so if there is anything you want to do, anything you need to do, uh, this is the time to do it. Uh, so just let me know what you want to do. Cool. I got one. Uh, I got a few, actually. Sure. I got like 20. I got like 400 things I want to do right now. Uh, Okay. But if we're getting close to Palador territory, I want to ritual cast divination. I mean, it doesn't matter if I ritual cast or not. We've got long rest in between, but mm -hmm. it means I don't use spell slots. Uh, ritual cast divination to contact him specifically, because uh, it says I can contact a god with it. Um, okay. I mean, and, I think... Uh, I'm not going to say no, but I believe the intention is being a cleric. You normally contact your god, but if it doesn't specifically stay, uh, then it, it yeah, says in theory. puts you in contact with a god or a god's servants. It doesn't say your god. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. sure. So um, I want to I want to contact um, the god of the nine hells, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple yeah. of things. First of all, um, are you going to cast this like with the still two days to go? Are you going to wait until you're a bit closer? Um, and also, it says here that incense and a sacrificial offering of, uh, appropriate to your religion together worth at least 25 gold, which the spell consumes. So you tell me what that is going to uh, be and mark off the 25 GP. Which uh, you thought of, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, Hesper, he created the bird people. Me, Aracokra. So I suppose so for each divination, 
I, I, but you're I not contacting. You're not contacting Hesper. Oh, I'm contact. Oh, oh, good point. Oh no, appropriate to my religion. That's weird. Well, yeah, it but you're my not religion contacting your sacrifice. Yeah. Oh God, what's Palador, the god of light? Um. Well, I've got. I don't know if any of this would help, but I have one white wooden loot worth thirty-five gold, a bestiary of astral beasts worth twenty-five, a book of religious scriptures and prayers of the huntress twenty-five, um, and that book oh, for the huntress. noble family of Lunaria. Yeah, it's huntress though, so mm. I don't know if any uh, of those. Oh, well, loves would hunting. Help. Right. <laughs> you decide. You tell me what you are. What is your sacrifice appropriate? Uh, incense What's and Palador all about? offering. Uh, um, Palador's Palador. all about Modron you ships. I know that much. We saw him. So um, on a Modron ship, I think. Technology then. I mean, he's the sun god sure technically. Mm. Um, burn something that can be warm. <laughs> Like the sun. Hold on a minute, I've literally got... <laughs> hold on, I've got all my freaking... We set fire I mean, this to something and then be, the point. This shouldn't just be on Kim to remember. Like, you guys can make religion checks. Like, you yeah. might have your own theory. Like, if Quill is like, oh yeah, he's all about technology, you can just make that assumption. Um, yeah, I know the symbol, symbol is the gauntlet hand with fire. Let me do a... Can I do a religion check? You may do a religion check. Yeah, of course. There's a couple of things I can tell you otherwise. Well... I'm pretty sure I've got a good idea of Palador. But... Palador, I mean, you would know the very basics that are taught across Eroes. You know, you, you, you hearken back to your days studying to be a messenger um, in the the Arakokan spires. Um, and you were taught, you know, everybody receives a basic tuition about the gods. Um, well, I suppose they were taught to you as being gods. You now know that that's not necessarily true. Uh, Palador is depicted as, normally depicted as quite a young man um, with blazing skin sort of skin that is permanently on fire um normally sort of d portrayed in a number of different skin tones and and you know body shapes but generally the consistent thing is that they are constantly on fire uh they provide warmth and light fire to the world of Aroes. um but they are, there is also a militant aspect to palador where they are a kind of god of protection uh they are a god of war as well um, when you need strength, you can call on Palador's strength, you know, the, the flame of courage and that sort of thing. Um, all of these things uh, work to uh, what you were taught about Palador. And then obviously Quill and yeah. Ayla specifically saw the sunship. And the figure you saw there, they seemed older than you had perhaps seen them as depicted in tapestries and things like that. More haggard, more weary. Um, they had the kind of flaming aura. Um, but yeah. I mean, years of defending Aroes from Starbane boys will do that to you, I suppose. Probably could. Ah, that's and what the Cradle does. So. <laughs> yeah, Cradle helps as well. Um, okay. So, stuff I could burn. Stuff to burn, let's see. Well, burn, burn, burn. Quest of scroll. Worth. <laughs> that would certainly meet the criteria of at least, at least <laughs> being 25 imagine? gold. Just, just pieces of it. Eight grand. Just pieces of it. Oh. <laughs> Palador didn't care about that one. Well, if you use the uh, spell scroll, by the way, up. go on. Yes. Okay. If, if, you if you use a spell, spell scroll, scroll, you need to use ingredients as well. No, if it's a spell scroll, you don't. Neat. I have a divination scroll too. There you go. You could spend that as well. Anyway, so anyone else? I'd like to think that while you... Quill is rummaging around asking everybody about what to burn, he just scroll, cut, stumbles like... across the scroll. So I got, I got the scroll. I could just use this. I could burn. I could it. use oh, this wait. as a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you just want to use the scroll and you want to use it while you're still two days out, um, uh, I mean, if I it it work, right? Won't it? I think it just it well, doesn't have a distance or anything, so. You don't know. Oh. Not, just because it's not in the rules doesn't mean that there are not uh, more esoteric elements to spells like this. It does say in specifically right, okay. in the spell, you ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within seven days. The GM offers a truthful reply. The reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. Um, so it's not, it's not a conversation. You get to ask a question 
and the god will answer it or provide some sort of omen or similar. Um, okay. I mean, I've, got, I've already got the question, if that helps, or at least the first question. Okay. Sure. Uh, and that would be, uh, what can we do to identify ourselves as friendly upon our return to Arois? Is that what you are asking? So you pull out the scroll, you unravel it, uh, recite the ancient words, trace the runes, watching them kind of glow brightly in orange light, and then that's the question you send out towards Palador. And Palador's... I start with Dear Palador and then end it with Bird Boy that you saw flying back to Aroas at one time. Okay. He remembers. <laughs> How can we identify... What was the question exactly? How can we identify ourselves as friendly upon our return to Aroas? Okay. You can't. You cast your mind out with the spell and in a trance-like state you await an answer and your mind and your body are filled with a, an intense heat a warmth that spreads through you not painful um but incredibly bright and and set overwhelming your senses you feel the warmth spread over your body the light almost blinding white um, and you can see the shape of a, a humanoid man um, kind of stood uh, in front of you and you hear this crackling voice like embers of a dying fire kind of speaking out to you um, Restore the mind of the Guardian, the Protector. Bathe your ship in its essence, and I will know that you are to be trusted. What the hell? <laughs> Restore the mind of the a Guardian. Cryptic, a cryptic rhyme, a short phrase, or an omen? Oh! 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 Restore the mind of the Guardian and bathe your ship in its essence. I mean, we've already done that. Sentry's mind has been restored. If it is Sentry, right? Like the Prime. I think it's basically coating the ship he in might... Prime essence. That's up for you to decide. If that's what he you might think not... it is, that's what you think um, it is. Is there another Guardian that needs its mind restored that Sentry could help along the way? I'm just thinking. Like, she has the power to restore the minds of Guardians now with the Matrix. Is It It might not be Sentry, it might be something else. This is not Ayla what speaking, Guardian? by the way, she's too dumb. She's too dumb for that. <laughs> yeah, Ayla's like, just somewhere else, this is <laughs> pure Katie. Um, nice. Uh, well, that's the answer you get. Um, anybody else, That's Tom's done a thing for a bit. Anybody else, anything anybody yeah, yeah. else would like to do? Go on, Sentry. So you put a um, hand up? I would like to um, commune with the Matrix in a similar vein okay. to what Quill did, but ask sure. three questions to Root. Oh. Sure. So let's have a look at commune. So this is a power that you have with the, the, the Matrix, the Prime Matrix, allows you to speak with the Primes of the past. Um, commune, you contact your deity or a divine proxy, in this case the Prime is the equivalent, uh, and you ask up to three questions that can be answered with a yes or a no. Uh, you ask a question before the spell ends, you receive a correct answer for each question. Um, I think as well, like it does say that you can, you might get a short phrase or something like that as well. Yeah, a short phrase is an okay. answer instead. Um Yep, okay. And if you cast this spell multiple times, but you don't need to worry about that because this takes charges, and I think it uses quite a lot of them, doesn't it, for the Prime Matrix? Yeah. So, the Sentry, you find a quiet moment aboard the ship, and you sit down, close your eyes, and you feel that golden sphere of light and energy within your chest, and you, you somehow know that you can cast your mind into that sphere and it is like plunging into a deep endless amber pool that stretches out to infinity with a horizon and a sky above you but there is nothing but this endless infinite amber water when you dive into it you can feel that amongst the eddies and the currents voices 
memories, history, the lives of thousands, tens of thousands of other guardians, beings like you that once had purposes, that once had friends, allies, enemies, just swirl around you. But in it, there are essences that are brighter, that are stronger, currents that you can feel more strongly. And as you swim towards them, the familiar presence, not an image, not a, a body, but a presence that you recognize. It's like being in an old forest beneath a large oak, its boughs kind of hanging down, its scent filling the air. And you know that this is Root Prime, your predecessor, the Prime before you. What questions do you ask? Um, can I ask it, um, do you know the Sunship? The voice that comes back is like a, it's like the branches swaying in the wind. It's an old voice. Yeah. Um, is there a way I can ask you to speak with it? My essence is now with you, Sent Sentinel Prime. I am here. I cannot go beyond. Okay. Um... How can I contact it? The Guardians were the protectors of Aroas. We help those who are in need. Remember this purpose, and Palador will know who you are. Thank you, Root. You are doing well, Sentinel Prime. Remember, till all are one. You feel till your consciousness one. kind of rise back up to the surface uh, as your consciousness rejoins the rest of the world. Yeah, and you feel that the the, uh, the spell has been successful. Cool. Awesome. Oh, one. Anything else? I don't suppose there's any uh, shops where I could buy a shield on the way. Is no, there? no, no, there isn't. You are on a a astral spaceship in the middle of astral space, heading towards. You're on the outer edges. You're not even close to a habited system anymore. You are now on the very fringes of astral space, uh, making don't your suppose... way towards your lost home. There's like a loot room where Thalia's been just like throwing stuff that she's you no know, collected. No. Thalia doesn't use shield. Neither does Kyrie. No. Neither did Bim. Never. What oh, are you Bim looking might for? Have had a secret shield fetage. <clears throat> what? A I see shield? you rummaging. Mm, You've been shield. stuck in your own mind. You want a shield? Oh. Uh, mm, yeah. Like centuries. I know it's really cool, isn't it? I really want one. It's cool. I do want one of those. You're not so going I on the front not... line, are you? What? Uh, I don't know. What? Shields. I like shields. I, I mean, sentries is so cool, I want one. Because then I right. could, you know, I could go on the front line, and you could stand behind me, and we can cast spells, and it'll be awesome. Uh, I'm not too... No, I don't want to stand too close to the big baddies. I quite like my distance. However, if you consider that, you know, you don't need to get one, you could just make one, because you're Nova. I'm sure we could piece together things from this ship and some scrap, and we could make one. I, I, I could try, Nova. but something's, thanks, something's telling me I, I, I'm not off. allowed to do that, like, you know, with the <laughs> time. <laughs> you, if, if, you, if you wanted to take pieces of the ship apart to try and make a shield, the ship that you don't own, you can absolutely try that. If you want to do well, that, you, you can definitely try make room. 
She doesn't even go back there. (laughs) Definitely not important. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Thai will be completely happy with you tearing her pride and joy apart. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, I don't think... of data pads that she can't read anymore. Like, Bim's not around. (laughs) Just glue all the Bim's data pads together. Jesus. (laughs) Tom, I would love to see you going into battle with just a load of iPads strapped to your arm. (laughs) (laughs) The most frail (laughs) shield. Put the torch on. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. Anything? Uh, Can I go and talk to Talia, please? You definitely can, yeah. You find her... Uh, since your since you escaped as a grat, Thalia has been withdrawn, quiet. Uh, sticks mainly to the cockpit. Doesn't seem to go back to her room. Sleeps in the cockpit. Uh, there is a kind of um, you don't smell any alcohol. Normally, when you've come in and seen her drinking, but this time you don't find anything. You just see her kind of staring out into the misty purple expanse that is astral space and there are no stars like the area you're looking out into there's almost nothing it's just endless mists and she's just looking around when you enter she doesn't turn around or anything like that um you just hear a kind of faint is there a problem something need doing i'm afraid we're still a few days away oh no it's all good i'm just bringing you some uh hot Chocolate, fresh from Sentry's Kitchen. Hey, here you go. I thought we were all out, but yes, thank you. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Um, She kind of takes it and just puts it to the side. She doesn't drink from it. Uh, It's very kind of you, Nova. Thank you. Is there anything else? Uh, I'm just going to awkwardly, like, kind of sit in one of the chairs and do an awkward lean. So how are you doing, Thalia? Oh my goodness, my dear, please. This is... Really? Really? Just come out and say it. Yes, I mean, obviously, I'm... I'm very... Sad. I'm very sad about everything, honestly. Uh, That ring was... It was really my last hope. Uh, It was the last thing I really hedged my bets on. I guess there's just... I have to accept what is and what I cannot change now. And I've got a job um, to do, which is to see you and your companions get home, and I intend to do it. So... Can I ask what you would have wished for if you got your wish? <laughs> oh, I suspect you know... Well, I suspect you know a part of it. Uh, I can make an educated long... guess. It's a complicated story, honestly, sweetheart. It's... I don't know if I'm ready to to tell the full story. I don't know if I am ready to tell it. Not fully. Okay. Well, how about I say some things and you just, like, nod your head or shake your head. Um, Your snakes can join in as well. Yeah, the little snakes kind of writhe and and kind of softly hiss like a a gentle purring. And she kind of smiles and she picks up the the drink... Uh, all right, sure. Go for it. So, I think that you came from an important family. And something happened. And something that made you the fabulous person that you are now. <laughs> and you left your family because you were sad about what they might think of you. And... Okay, maybe not that bit, but... Keep going. You miss them, and you want to go back to who you were, and if you do, I might have a solution, maybe? Well, I can tell you that you got five out of six. In terms of your solution... If you're referring to your companions, who I've seen are very capable magic users, I am sad to say that I'm not sure if it will do anything. I know a lot of people in this multiverse, Nova, and some of them are quite skilled themselves. 
and they could not help me. I believe that only a being as powerful as the one who did this is capable of undoing it, which is why I wanted Graz's ring. It wasn't just a spell that did this to me. It was somebody quite powerful. I mean, certainly if you and your companions want to try, I won't say no. But I don't really have any high hopes that it will do anything. I... I mean, we can always try and... Well, if it's a god you need, we seem to have several, you know, on dial. M maybe we could figure something out when we get back to Aroas. That would certainly be... That is perhaps the only hope I have left. Uh, I mean, obviously your friend Quillick has some divine connection to some being. I did hope that perhaps that being may be somebody that I can beseech for help. But I am happy to let Quillick try, or you try, or Lucius try, or... But I'm not going to get my hopes up about it, if you'll forgive me. I've tried too many times with a lot of very different people to fix my problem. Well, what will you do when we get to Aroas? Will you stay with us for a bit? Oh, honestly, my dear, I don't know. Um, find somebody that can help me. Uh, but I imagine that a, a new world... A world where perhaps a creature like me, people may not even know what I am. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I certainly have no objections to helping you and your companions, but I would like to maybe try and find some answers to my problem. Um, I'd like that if you stayed with us for a bit. And I'm sure we could find someone to help you. would. She kind of gives you a sly grin. And if you can find someone to help me, I will be very glad to return the favor. I just want to say, I know you're sad. I know lots of things have happened. And I know that we kind of, you know, we screwed up with Graz. But you call your condition a problem. And I can't comment on that. But I want you to know that you're badass. Like, you're so cool, and like, watching you fight, and watching you do the thing with your eyes, that's amazing! And like, I know you're not happy with it, but I just want you to know that my sweet... I think it's the coolest thing ever. You can stop, my dear. I have no issues with how I look, the abilities that I have. I mean, I think I even said it to you when we first met. I know that I am a badass. You don't need to tell me that. The problem is, it's not just about me. It goes bigger than that, I'm afraid. And you oh, say the all these things, but Nova, uh, you don't know me. You don't know who I've been, the things that I've done, the person that I was. When what happened happened for many, many years, well, let's just say that I was not too different from our dear friend, Sax Ravis. I was selfish. I was cruel, manipulative, secretive, violent, and not in a fun, badass way. I mean in a cruel, villain way. Because I was angry, because I was sad, because I was spiteful. But centuries will give you a different perspective on things. Watching the galaxy become watching the multiverse be controlled by people like Valkyrian will change your perspective on things. You know, I met Kyrie a few decades ago. I helped her. I rescued her from some thugs she was trying to avoid and she'd clearly not found her own place in the world, but you know the sad truth, Nova? I didn't save her because I wanted to help her. I saved her because I thought it might make myself feel better. 
But I'm glad that she has a safe space now, that she has somewhere that she can call home. But don't make the mistake of thinking that I'm some hero, because I'm not. I'm really not. No, but if we hadn't met you, we'd probably be arrested and on Elysium. And oh, there were plenty of pilots in that disgusting bar where we met. You would have found someone. You would have found. One of them, uh... one of them had oxygen as an option. I, I don't think we would have survived as long as we have with you. Well, I can't say that their company would have been as pleasurable, but still. Still, enough. I, I'm. This is too much for me. This is a bit too much melancholy and self-pitying. If you want to try any spells or rituals, do let me know, but I'm not... Yes, well, anyway. Anyway, my dear. And she I'll kind of smiles, and you can see the the, fa the armor comes back on, right? Like, you kind of have this moment of vulnerability, and then she's back into, I'm the captain, I've got a job to do kind of mindset. Um, and she doesn't brush you away, but it's very clearly like she puts the, I'm done now, like, kind of vibes down. Shuts yeah. off. I'll go cool. talk to Quill, and I'm sure we can try. At least try, right? You know? But anyway. Oh, believe me, my dear, I'm, I'm more than willing to try anything, as I have proven time and time again throughout this galaxy. And she kind of gives you a wink. I just want to say thanks. And I know you know you're a badass, but it might have just been nice to hear it from someone else. Because you are. Anyway, going now. Bye! I think maybe... As you're leaving, you just hear a very kind of, a very, very faint, thank you. Crack that off. Yeah, crack that the, egg. The door to the cockpit, uh, mm -hmm. Lucius is there uh, against the wall. <laughs> Nova, that's you, Salia. Do you need this door on this little uh, hatch thingy here? <laughs> Yes, Lucius, I definitely wouldn't remove that hatch, or unless you like would. And do you need to breathe? Uh, yeah, yes. Then oh. I wouldn't remove that door. I back away. <laughs> yes, good, good, good man, good man. Seriously, Nova, keep an eye on him. I don't want him taking any of the ship apart, please. No, he 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 thinks I can make a shield out of bits of the ship, but I I'm not don't sure I can. Absolutely, no, maybe don't this do that. floor no. panel. No, no, no Lucius, it, leave Lucius, it. Big cat. No. And then you hear. <laughs> okay, I, I'm leaving it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything else from anyone? So no one to grab Quill, and do you want to try Greater Restoration or something like that? Yeah, I guess I'd fill uh, Quill in on like on the details and like you know press that I'm not entirely sure it's going to work because it seems to be something bigger at play here. But Yolo, let's try oh, it. Oh, my first clerical client, voluntary clerical client. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Restra doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I mean, you you well you can you go and see Thalia and she kind of just shrugs, um, gestures vaguely at herself. Um, cool. Uh, well, three you options. want to try something? Okay, three things could work. One, remove curse. Do you, uh, so you cast remove thing. curse? Uh, yeah, it's just it's a Let's free have a thing. Let's see if there's any components. To... No components? No? Okay. Uh, so you... Let's, Let's see. All curse is affecting one creature or object, and if the object is cursed... Uh, I'm just trying to see if you get any information on the curse. Okay, so you channel the arcane energy. You feel the power of Hesper kind of swell. You reach out, you touch uh, Thalia, um, who just stares at you very unexpectedly and blankly, and you watch as the magic, what, as you touch her, all that magic that you gather to try and break the enchantment just breaks away. It just vanishes Ooh. into the air. Okay, boy, this is a toughie, huh? Um, okay, no, that's okay, that's okay. That was just a weak little spell. Trust me, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. Um, I'm hey, Nova? sure you are. Yo! Uh, do we have a hundred gold to spare? A hundred. Yes! Roger, roger. We do. Cool, okay. Uh, throw it this way. 
Boom! Great restoration. I literally just threw, I literally just threw 100 okay. gold pieces at Quill. It is technically diamond dust worth 100 gold, but we'll hand wave it and say, sure, Nova has 100 gold of diamond dust um, that yeah, she exactly. digs out and just not... Yeah, exactly. Um, sure. And yeah, you cast Greater Restoration. You feel the same process. You kind of take the the diamond dust in your hands. Um, you you uh, do you like blow it at Thalia? Like, what does what does Quill do with the actual spell? Like, what does this look like when you cast it? Uh, instead of blowing it, I kind of like almost gently, with gentle gusts, kind of enshroud her with wind and spectral feathers and the diamond dust and all the components. And then it's like a Power Rangers transformation scene. And she comes back and she's not snaky anymore. That's well, that looks bit like. doesn't happen. But the rest Aww. of it, the way you described it, it's fine. But what I will say, because this is a fifth level spell, I'll give you some more information on this as well. Um, make a Arcana check for me. Uh, okay. Well. <laughs> oh my god, I'm meant to be the boy. You're meant to be the boy. <laughs> so, I'm when you summon the, the spell... Boy very similar thing happens but this time rather than just it kind of dissipating you do feel that as you as the magic coalesces around thalia you begin to see um nova doesn't see this thalia doesn't see this but quill through your magic through the power of hesper you do however see that there are these tiny uh invisible like vines that are wrapped all around Thalia's limbs and up her neck, um, like very faint shimmering lines of magic. And as your spell tries to break the enchantment, you see that these things are, these little invisible lines are so heavily enchanted, so powerfully magically that your spell just collapses against them. It's like throwing glass at a wall. It just breaks apart into the air. And you can tell that, that whatever created this curse this effect that has transformed thalia into a into a medusa into a you know a, a gorgon creature was powerful was very very powerful um probably arch probably fey in nature judging by the pattern of vines and thorns and things like that um oh okay uh wow um very very I did, powerful I did try and warn you um, Okay, look, I have one last try. The chances are slim. I could try asking my god. An intervention, if you will, of divine nature. <laughs> Mr. Quillock, uh, please, if this is... You are more than welcome to try, but if this is going to deny you some power that you're later going to need, uh, I don't wish you to waste it on me. Uh, ah, we're two days out. Chances are slim. Very well, if, if you wish to try, by all means. Okay, divine intervention. <laughs> um, oh wait, you can't use this feature again for seven days. Divine I think that's if it's successful. I think it's if it's successful, uh, you can't use it for seven days. Oh yeah. I think okay. if it fails, you can use it the next day. Yeah. Trot remembers. Sure. I'll I'll try that. So I need to roll a percentile so dice, and the number needs to be less than my lower. cleric level, which is ten. So ten percent chance of succeeding. It needs to be nine or lower. So it's nine percent chance. Oh god, okay. Three to one go. Work that once. Oh. 57. <laughs> so you reach out trying to feel Hesper's light and knowledge and power. But that connection, that distance between you and Erois, you know that it's difficult to summon that vast amount of energy needed to break this enchantment from such a great distance. Um, Hesper's power is thin, weakened, spread too much across Erois itself. There's not enough there for you to draw on to break whatever ability this is, uh, whatever curse this takes the form of. And for Nova and Thalia, you just see nothing. You just see Quill, and then nothing happens. Oh, okay. Should uh, I... I is, does this take I, a long time, I... or...? Um, look, okay, here's how here's how it works being Helex clerical client, okay? If the, if I can't do what you ask me to, I owe you one free Eye of the Storm charge. There you go. So when we get back to Aroas, and when I get them back, I owe you one free Eye of the Storm. When we're back in Aroas, I, I can find out where. Means, Mr. Quirk. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, where? my eye. Where? I can... 
Look, I when I can look, I can use the. I'll, I owe you one question for free that I can guaranteed answer. But I don't have any questions. I know what this is. I know what caused it. I know why but it's here. But you could ask. You could ask who could lift the curse. Mm. I'm yeah. assuming a god or something like that, or a creature like that. I would give you a specific answer. Oh wait, 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 wait. Tiangong. Yes. Could you lift the curse if you were more uh, if you were more together? Hmm. You wait for a while, and you can feel the presence in your blade, this, this weapon that you formed this symbiosis with. Take some time to answer, as it seems to be thinking. Um, they seem to contemplate, and they come back. Yes, no. What do you mean, yes, Yo. no? Yes, no. You've never said yes, no before? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe? Is yes, no, maybe? Yes. Yeah! <laughs> there we go, we kind of learned a third word here. Oh, we're doing it, we're doing it. That's thinking in binary. Um, so Tiangong might be able to lift it but they're not sure. More shards, more power. Hopefully next time I manage to, to put him to get them, them together, we'll get more words in well, there. Then have nothing you, has massively changed. Have you sensed any shards whilst we've been traveling? Not since Zax Ravis's one. Well. Tiangong, is there a way to reform you without finding physical shards yes does it involve transferring energy into you yes oh does it have to be life energy no magical I mean, Nova has to ask the question. It's all in Nova's brain, right? Does yeah. it have oh, to I be magical energy? Yes. Could I cast a spell into you? I, this is the problem with only having three now, I guess, answers. Yes. So if I, if I cast a spell right now on you, that would help? Yes. That seems too easy. <laughs> yes. So right now, if I just call, if I just, if I just <clears throat> cast, if I cast blight on you, that would work. Yes. It, you're not really casting the spell, but you can transfer mm. the the energy that this relationship and it's because you are you form a relationship right like tiangong yeah. is giving you the knowledge of conjuring this magic and is kind of shaping how it works but that energy is still coming from you like it's still your source of energy just without tiangong you don't have the knowledge of how to do any of it um it would be absorbing that energy from you it would take a spell slot but you wouldn't actually cast the spell you're not gonna you know cast blight on an object um okay um, guys, I'm about to do something really reckless. Uh -oh. object? I no, mean, okay. Lucius was trying to wrench the back of a chair earlier, so uh -oh. I can't be much more reckless than him. You don't need it, Quill. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Please. Also so, yeah. lumbar support. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll just pick up the hammer and drag it sure. towards Nova and stand ready. I mean, you all stand ready, and Nova, you summon the energy, and yeah, it just... You feel that spell slot, so the marker spell slot off, because you channel the energy and it just... You just feel that energy kind of pulled from you. Um, Can I... How far out are we? Have we got a few days to go? Like, are, are we... Like, can I get a long yeah, rest in? Like a short rest in? Yeah. yeah, you got like two days and stuff. Here's the thing. When you try and commute, like, yeah. Tiangong will respond with yes. What, if this is having an effect, it must be micro 
infinitesimal. Like, it, yeah. it must be such yeah. a small effect that you don't notice any changes. Like, you, you can spend hours churning spell slots into Tiangong, but it has almost no visible yeah, kind of yeah. impact. Um, and eventually, yeah, like you just realize that, like, yeah, this isn't even one percent. Like, you could spend a whole yeah. day doing it, and you know, maths, you know, you don't even have an idea of how much this has affected it. Yeah. But Nova, being the smart person that she is, if you could find a source of incredible amounts of magical energy, like incredible amounts, that Sequester. could restore. Tiangong fully. Even Sequester wouldn't be enough. Sequester is just a seventh level spell. It's not that powerful. The We're talking matrix. like the energy oh. um, to yeah, create just... <laughs> something really Narrowing immense. in on Sentry's chest. The world engine. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. something like the Prime Matrix or the world engine or the, the sunship or the cradle. The sunship. Stuff. Oh. We are talking like immense big, levels of magical boy, power yeah. because also the other thing that i think nova would work out <laughs> sure uh this other thing that i think nova would calculate is that the energy you feed into tiangong as a spell slot he, they probably expend by communicating yeah, with so you. it's like it, yeah. it's like a, you're not providing enough to yeah. actually make a difference you know it's not efficient this new sentience is costing them power to use. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. it drains their own energy to, to answer your questions, even simply okay. like this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, we all go to it sleep, was, it and was just Sentry... standing there with the hammer. What'd you do? When are you doing it? Yeah, nothing happens. I, uh... hmm? I don't know. It's a... No, it's fine. It's not gonna happen. I just thought... <sighs> I thought I was onto something, but... It's not going to work. I know I'm not smart enough down. to give you any advice, so I'm just going to put the hammer down. But, you know, if you want to do something reckless again, just give me a shout. It's fine. Um, I'll be there. Always. Yep. Always. Always and forever. Okay. Will do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless there is anything specific that anybody wants to do, uh, another day passes. For Sentry, Lucius, and Ayla, though, um, it's, there's no night on the astral plane. But you do have a kind of routine sleeping habits now where everybody kind of tries to sleep at the same times. You know, people try and kind of be up and about and do things just to help the time pass quickly. And uh, Ayla, Lucius, and Sentry, you become very rapidly uh, alert. Uh, Lucius and Ayla, because you only need to be kind of like in your trance for four hours, so you kind of spend the rest of the evening in quiet kind of downtime. Sentry, you know, you're in the same position where you're only kind of shut down for a brief period of time to regain energy. You hear uh, sort of shouts and cries coming from within the ship. Uh, you hear banging, somebody rapidly running down the ship. Uh, you hear big cat start to snarl um, and growl uh, and the sound of, of kind of <sighs> get out of my way. What are you doing? I Where are going to immediately run out. Is it Rethra? It is. Yeah, you can see that uh, hair all wild, the, the kind of like brown, lightly red hair kind of has gone wild. The tattoos are kind of glowing with fiery embers. Um, they've managed to the axe that they they took from the drow in one hand, and he's looking around wildly. Uh, you can see just drenched in sweat, like covered in it, eyes quite wild, and he's, he's squaring off with Big Cat. But it doesn't look like he's aggressive. It looks like he feels threatened, but Big Cat is also like what the fuck are you doing? Like, well, I'm going to get angry because you're freaking me out. Um, and there's this standoff, and the three of you kind of see this happening. Rethra wheels around, but he, he it's like he doesn't quite see all of you there. He's like, what's going on? Where am I? Who? Rethra? Where's... Rethra, calm down. <laughs> I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight anymore. And he's We're just looking around you. like... <sighs> and he seems Nobody's to, like, fighting you. take a moment... The theater. I was back in the theater. They were making me fight again. How? How did I get there? How? How am I back? 
It's a bad dream. It's a dream, Reth. You're not there. No, You're no, with no, us. No, we don't dream. Elves don't dream. Elves, I was there. I was there. And he looks at you and he's like grabbing you by the collar. He's like, you don't understand. Easy. They won't make uh... me fight again. Nobody's making you fight, Rethra. The axe kind of falls to the ground. Toom, toom, toom. And he like grabs his head and kind of slinks down. I wasn't there, was I? Oh, God. No. By, by the gods, by the divines. I wasn't there. Ugh. You can hear, like, his breathing starts really, like, rapidly increasing. You can see him, like, rocking back and forth as his breathing is getting faster and faster. Stay calm. It's okay. It's it's bound to have had a lasting effect on you. You were there for so what? long. You don't... I know the words are kind we of don't understand. Him. But we're here now. And it wasn't real. It's not real. You're with us. A bunch of people who are gonna keep you safe now. You're gonna keep us safe too. We're not safe, fighting. Safe. We're just oh. going home. <sighs> I just, I don't, we don't have a home. Alfheim's gone. There's no Alfheim anymore. I didn't I even wanna... know Alfheim existed recently. My home is Erois. 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 They tried to make us fight there. They tried to make us fight, but lots of us abandoned. That's why I quit. That's why I stopped serving in the Valkyrian army. They wanted us to attack our own other elves. Ah! And you can see his breathing kind of calms down and starts taking these big, deep gulps of air. It's not, but not me, not me. Uh, my past life, uh, the rebirth, the memories, they're all still there. God, what's mine and what's not mine? I don't know anymore. We'll figure it out. But all you need to know for now is that you're safe and that we're going home to a place that you can have a home. You're not going to need to fight people. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can hey, you hey. just... Can you just sit with him? Can you just sit here for a bit? Just sit. I just don't want to talk. I just... I need somebody else here. Just in case... In case... Sure. In case the memories come back. Sure. Thanks. I'll be here. Thank you. Okay. You don't have to talk, but I could tell you about our ship. We have a ship, by the way, on Aroas. Anything? Tell me anything. Tell okay. me. Tell me where you're from. I'll tell, tell me about you Aroas. All about it. And so I'll spend probably the next, well, however long until everyone yeah, else yeah, is yeah. awake, just telling, telling Rethra about Aroas, what we've gone through so far, and how we met, yeah. and telling him about. Uh, the ship and that we've got a crew waiting for us and that it's a safe place and that he can stay with us and i'll just i'll spend mm -hmm. that time i'll also probably sit and try and calm down big cat at the same time and just... <laughs> yeah i i think yeah once big cat knows that like there's not a threat he kind of naturally chills out but he'll he'll sit with you like he he'll, he's always liked ayla you've always made the effort to kind of like bond with big cat so he kind of sits with you and rethra seems to find the presence like now that he's not in fight or flight mode he actually quite likes you know having big cat there and he pets him and strokes him um but yeah ayla's not the best conversationalist i think you would agree that she is not the best but just yeah. having someone talk to him having somebody tell him about stuff that gives him something to focus on does help you can still see that there are still signs that this is not something that a one conversation is going to fix. That there are still, you know, you still catch him like glancing around the corners of his eyes, like his hand still goes near the axe, you know, making sure it's within reach and stuff like that. But having somebody there helps. And I think that you find that this is maybe, maybe some sort of uh, routine for like night times, making sure that you keep an eye on him might be a wise idea for the future. Uh, if these kind of things keep happening, um, yeah, Lucius I think she'd what do you guys do? Like, do you stay? Point of doing that. Yeah. When uh, I notice that he's like, I just need someone to sit here. I'm just gonna kind of glance at Sentry and just do a yeah. little nod and then just back away slowly. <laughs> yeah, sure. 
and lead yeah. them yeah, to sure. it. You can you can just go back to the the you know cabins where you've been sleeping and stuff like that. The sentry back, um... kind of follow or yeah, I'll, I'll like give Ada a little nod and then uh, slowly walk back to the cabin. Okay, sure. Sorry, Lucius, what are you gonna say? Uh, it's just a very like obvious attempt to be like subtle kind of like when you miss a train you jog and then you build back to a walk again as if you intended that the whole time just like hands <laughs> clasped behind his back just like looking around and then he tries a hatch on the way it's like mm, yeah <laughs> be good for... and then <laughs> go back into a room yeah sure sure <clears throat> uh yeah um the next day, unless there's again, unless there's spells you want to cast or things you want to do, passes in the similar function. Go on, Quill. Just one question. Uh, so one of the tasks sure. was to alert Palador. Um, is in, in casting that that spell, the divination spell, is Palador aware of that, or was it like his godliness is what responded to me? <laughs> is it like sending? I to would a god? say. The other thing you don't know is, is you know, you don't know whether Paladon knows the identity of who cast the spell. You kind of throw a question out to this divine being. It's not like caller ID where he's like, Quillic Ad Kalar, Araka, the cleric of Hesper, has is I got a message that guy. For Yeah, <laughs> so I will, I will tell you, you don't think that he is going to know that you were the one who cast that spell. You got your answer to your question. Whether you were right. like, "Hey, it's me! I I use that spell. Do you know me?" Yeah. Like that's not how it's gonna work. That's why I sadly. asked. That's why I asked the question in that way because he won't recognize the twin star unless I'm standing on top of it, dying. <laughs> There's no way he's gonna it. know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just wondering <laughs> if, if, if that spell enough of an alert. <laughs> I'm I mean, not sure going to lunatic. <laughs> I will leave that to your best discretion, Quillick. Okay. Whether you believe that that yeah. is enough. I mean, I think the answer we got is good enough an, an, an answer, if we've got it right anyway. Like, he doesn't know that the Prime has been restored or that their mind is back to normal. So I suppose it makes sense that he would say, restore the mind of the, of the Guardian. Um, I guess. M maybe. Right? I'm not answering. Right? I will not okay. give that question an answer. Instead, uh, unless there isn't a thing, um, a day passes and Thalia calls you all to the cockpit uh, on the sort of like end of the second day, beginning of the third day. Uh, she just gestures out the main viewport of the Twin Star Longbow, this sleek, narrow astral vessel that you've been traveling along. Before you, astral space seems to morph into something else. The purple, misty hue changes to a subtle blue and white. And the fabric of reality seems to refract and bend like a thousand mirrors were drifting ahead of you. Looking closely, you can see the shape of enormous chunks of ice partially hidden by the blue hue of the astral mist and the rime and the frost across its surfaces. Millions of these ice shapes, all floating in different shapes and sizes, drifting in random patterns, spreads out before you, seemingly forever. I think that this is the shifting straits bim referred to i i can't read his notes there in infernal but well the last time we spoke he said that this was something that kept erois a secret i think that we have to go through it okay uh infernal nova can you do that uh, I was going to say, Mark, like, in the time that we had, could I have, like, cast Comprehend Languages and gone through Bim's notes and made notes on my own, knowing that this is what we were sure. going towards? Like, just Absolutely. as a... What's the word? Um, I won't even bother showing you the Infernal one, because you can read it with Comprehend Languages. Uh, and I'm just going to give this to Kim. Did you write the entire thing in Infernal? Oh, no. I have an Infernal font I downloaded. Oh! Nice. oh. 
Oh, sorry. Cool. Uh, so I think <laughs> Kim should Kim should be the only one that can see that. But if it's shown up for all okay. of you, whoops. Um, no, I can't see look. it. Okay, uh, but yeah. So Nova is pouring through Bim's notes and has a collection. But yeah, the rest of you. I mean, how, how what do what do you guys do or say or feel seeing this site before you? Do you have any questions? Is it not clear what it's like? I don't like this at all. This is this is quite overwhelming. If if no one else, with all the technology that we've witnessed, can't penetrate through. Well, Lucius, I'm afraid that if you want to get home, this is the way. This is. Uh, f- I've looked on the the. According to the the magic engine, uh, the magic sensors, this stretches on impossibly far. It would take us days to try and navigate it, and even then it might just continue. It stretches even into uncharted space. Um, so we might not be the only ones who tried this before. Um, <clears throat> I, I think Bim's notes mentioned the Valkyrian uh, Empire um, f- flying through the straits, but on the highest security level. So I imagine we could possibly find a path, but there might be bad guys there. We also need to identify a path as well. This is seemingly impossible to navigate. Shall I I, I read? I'll read Bim's notes out for you if you want, and then uh, we can see if anyone has any bright ideas. Um, uh, Okay, so Bim wrote... The Straits, yes, quite a mystery, but deadly and dangerous. A few ships have entered and returned, but barely, talking of giant icy shapes that smashed the, their other ships to pieces. Valkyrian flies on the uh, files on the Straits high. Valkyrian files on the Straits highest security level. Scholars believe the Straits may be the expulsion of when the Genesis Well first erupted and the first divines emerged. Intense heat, intense cold, light and pressure all exploded, changing many of our own stars and worlds. Ancient history, mostly destroyed by Callus, suggests that these frozen fragments were once scattered evenly across the plains, or would drift between them. Did Siaska pull all of them here to hide the missing world? So it sounds to me like Siaska is responsible for all these fragments being here. Like a second cradle. Yeah. From so, I don't know who this Siaska is, but this is certainly a defense. I mean, I'm a pretty good pilot, but I'm going to need help to navigate this. I, the, the Twin Star's quick. As long as I can react in time, I can probably avoid some of these things smashing us to pieces, but... It's going to be. It's going to require all of us working together. I feel. Hmm. Yep, hmm. I can co-pilot again. Unless, maybe I should check my notes that we got. Like maybe if there's anything in there, like it says, Valkyrian files, higher security. We got a whole bunch of files, didn't we? Uh, you got the layouts for the Tassadar ships. No, got Tassadar. blueprints. You got like the blueprints. blueprints. Intel Nothing on Valkyrian in outposts, guard rotations, patrol. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Nothing about this Could we this use the cannons area. to blast the path through? <laughs> we could, Sentry. My worry there is if we hit some of the larger ones, we'll create smaller ones, which could just be just as deadly if they smash into us at a high velocity. Um, and if we destroy the smaller ones, we might cause... I don't know. I mean, these things look fragile. I wonder if noise or, or magical force might even be enough to break some of them apart. It's certainly an option. I think if if need be and we have to start blasting a way to clear a path, that's certainly something we can do, but it would I mean, be good. who knows what it might cause. It would be good almost to create some sort of barrier in the front of the ship that could shove out of the way, you know, like a big thing. Wall of ice. You know when you clear snow? Like, yeah, I guess a wall. Like, just... As a point, a of some ice. of these shapes, some of these shapes are colossal they dwarf the twin star they're like small moons they are enormous some of them are as big as the twin star some of them are maybe a bit bigger some of them are smaller like it's like several of these bigger ones have broken up and turned into smaller chunks all different shapes and sizes some are long and thin some are almost perfectly um, spherical some of them are jagged like asteroid shapes all made from this thick sort of blue and white frost and rime Oh, 
Quill, um, could mm-hmm. you use your eye to, to, to chart a path? I uh, used them all in Azagrat, unfortunately. Uh, oh. And it hasn't been that long since since then. No. Three days. Um, so you got a few days left. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure well, out, look. there must be a way to identify a correct path. Yes, uh, but, and uh, out of character, I will tell you that, yeah, there's 100% you can use skill checks and stuff to do that. There's no point trying to worry about that and and be like, oh, you know, how are we going to do that? Um, Thani's mm-hmm. like, yes, uh, I, I think that, yes, we, whatever magic we have available to us, uh, consider what abilities you have, consider what skills that you are especially good at. Um, having somebody who is knowledgeable of pathways or can help oh, spot dear. dangers, that sort of thing. Um, Hammer if goes need be, Ayla. Well, honestly, Ayla, <laughs> if need be, the turrets, you and Kyrie perhaps clearing something that's in our way, that's certainly going to do something. Um, I just worry about what consequences it may have is the only issue. But it will certainly help us clear a path. Uh, I don't know how deep this place is. I mean, it could be a few hours. It could be... I mean, it looks like it stretches on for hours. We have to try something. But We've got we this do. far. There's, uh, there's no turning back. There's no other destination. There's no other route. It's through here, or you don't go home. So... Well, we have okay. Quill navigating. We'll have Ayla on a turret. Let's fall back. We've got Nova in the engines. I'll be... I'll be present. I think your wall of cold idea is a good idea. Like, if we need just to to shove or like you know shove things out the way, that could that could maybe even just even just setting something in a tailspin, you know, or giving us My a nudge is, away from something, or is uh, blocking your vision to actually pilot. I do need to. I yes, don't don't block my vision, please. I will need to see. Uh, as I can cover will. Um, important parts of the ship that shouldn't be hit. Uh, the other thing is, we just don't know what will happen until we get in there. Also, I have Say, to go outside to cast this spell. Well, I mean, it is possible to survive for some see. time. It might. Well, that's up to the spell description. But if need be, I mean, it's not impossible to survive for a brief period of time in astral space. Um, hold your breath. You'll get a bit chilly. Uh, and if you stay out for too long, you'll get very, very cold. Uh, but it is possible to survive at least for a brief period of time. I can create a hemispherical dome with a radius of up to 10 feet. Or I can create 10, 10 foot square panels. Well... And ask them, maybe. Well, unless there's any objections. Would Elko be useful? Could I use Elko as an assistant to maybe help push some small... small I don't know, you tell me. I mean, maybe. Yeah, if you can summon Elko outside of the ship. and uh, There's not Mm. really anything for Elko to move on. Like, you know, uh, can Mm. it fly? I don't know if it can fly. I don't think you can. Could I maybe like just stand him on the ship? <laughs> like just plonk him on there. You could, yeah, you could, you could stand. The only thing is, is, obviously, any rapid twists and turns might see poor Alco mm. tumbling off. But true. Uh, hmm. uh, anyway, I don't want to have any analysis paralysis. So unless there are any objections, Thalia begins piloting the ship into the shifting straits. Yeah, I'll co-pilot. And... Yeah, I, I could do with some help in engineering if anyone feels at a loose end. Maybe uh, Rethra can... can help. Uh, a lot of this stuff is pretty new to me, but I can certainly try, yeah. Nova can, it's basically... can do a lot of this stuff. It's more the heavy lifting that she might need a hand yeah. with. Yeah, Look at I my can, noodles. I can try. Yeah, sure. Uh, he kind of nods and follows Nova. I'll try uh, casting yeah. this wall so that it doesn't obscure at least the cockpit. Uh, something like that. A barrier at the front, which attaches to maybe the wing-to-wing. Well, how long does the wall of ice last? Ten minutes. 
do you do you want to do that right now just as you're heading into oh, the first if bit we're, or do you if it wait? looks like we're colliding or about to collide into something i'll conjure it as like Try a fail safe a, so i'm gonna be the in the cockpit looking alert i think cool. so in the cockpit we currently have thalia obviously quill co-pilot and then lucius kind of like chewy standing behind them all um <laughs> what's sentry doing sentry are you staying in the cockpit as well um yeah yeah i'll stay in the okay. cockpit and then we have Kyrie wow. and ayla in the turrets and then nova and rethra in the engineering um and big cats asleep in the lounge all right so the twin star longbow begins uh the quite rapid journey into the shifting straits and as you get within the field you very quickly become aware of, yeah just how massive these things are and at how quickly they are moving once you are inside them thalia does her best to kind of you know constantly keep be on the move and avoiding them as they go um but there are going to be some obstacles but before any of we get into any of that uh there is a kind of magical crackle as a message thalia kind of glances down at the magical console of the twin star presses a few crystals and uh, swipes at a few sensors um, and a crackling voice comes over uh, through the ship. Unknown vessel, this is VF VSF Kalista. Be warned that there is... We are attempting... Any assistance will be... Captain, I've, I've sent the mess by the Emperor. Look! And then it goes dead. VSF Kalista... Mm. Kalistra. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay, Valkyrian ship. But. Uh, that doesn't something sound out here very got it. Good. Are they near? Uh, Can they see us? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, that uh, it didn't even seem like they could recognize us. And I, uh, there's nothing showing up on my instruments that they're anywhere nearby. And then you see Thalia kind of has to swerve as like a giant piece of ice kind of smashes into another one. And all these different splinters come flying out. She very rapidly uh, spins the twin star, causing it to kind of uh, shake all about to the side. Um taking it into a tailspin but then she writes the ship as she pulls up into a long corridor with ice on both sides and then she kind of looks and she's like ah, damn it that maneuver quill can you i can't see where we just came from i i think that that's not just a little bit off course uh and okay. you can see can... now it is just you are in this labyrinth of icy asteroids and corridors as everything just swarms in around you. Um, what would you like to do, Quill? Um, what could I do to get us back on the right path to figure out you, our orientation since entering? Because, um, like, navigation isn't a, a, a thing, but what sort of check would that it's be not a if skill. I did a navigation thing? A navigation? Well, uh, do you have any proficiency in, in navigator's tools? I do indeed. I've got, well, I've got card. Okay. Oh, wait. Is that cartographer's tools? Cartography? Yeah, I'd say cartography. It gives you like a... You have an understanding of like tracking landmarks and things like that from, you know, things like that. So I'd say this would be uh, wisdom plus proficiency. Wisdom plus proficiency. Okay, so... Uh, that plus 21. two. 23. Nice. 23. Okay, so <clears throat> as a point, you don't... you. You don't re you don't repeat that check ever again. So Quill, you kind of spend some time oh, and looking at the map and things like that. You can say, "Yep, yeah, okay, Thalia, I think I know where we are now." Uh, you can make the points and we can get two, you five, back on six. course. Exactly. You kind of call out the bearings, but you notice that as you fly deeper into this these shifting straits, this labyrinth of ice, um, things begin moving a lot faster. And Nova, inside the engine room you begin to see that the power of the engines is fluctuating rapidly. Uh, there's almost moments where one engine cuts out completely and another one flares. You begin to hear the building of power within the conduits. You can hear hisses, um, uh, rumbles, something rattling around. The lights, all of you notice that the lights in the whole ship kind of blink in and out. Ayla, your entire turret just goes dead for a second and then it comes back on and is trying to lock onto something that isn't there. 
stuff is happening all over the ship that you don't recognize. Energy. Ghost signals. Disruption. It's more than just ice. What is going I don't on? say any of that. Mm -hmm. One of the I engines, Nova, device. is is powering up to boost, but the other one is not firing. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you do? Well, if I if I try and power up the second, no, because I don't want to. Do I want to boost? No, I probably don't want to boost. Do I? Because I'll boost straight into what a friggin' thing. Um, can I try and discharge the engine that's trying to boost and maybe? Sounds like a great Arcana check. An Arcana check. Okay. To operate the Magitech. Uh, Arcana is a plus six for me. Where the hell are my dice? My digi dice. Digi dice. Oh, jeez. That is a 10, a flat 10. So, you, Nova, as you're frantically trying to discharge, you do absolutely discharge the energy from the engine. This causes the engines to ignite. Um, both you hear this thunderous roar as the ship lurches forward. Uh, Thalia, fuck, she kind of lets out a thing as you can see one of these giant glaciers barreling. Almost you're about to smash into it. Those of you in the cockpit, what do you do? Quill, you are currently piloting, so I'm going to throw this to either Sentry or Lucius first. Okay. If they do anything. Wall of ice. Okay. So you're just going to conjure the wall of ice to try and, what, like, deflect the ship away or, like, kind of nudge you so that you're going to go in a different direction? How are you using what, it? What I'm going to do is create a triangle so that it kind of helps uh, push against and kind of, you know, so use it as a... Yeah, so scrape instead of across. smashing dead into something, it will kind of deflect you at an angle. Hopefully, uh, push it away. Way. Yeah, and because it's a point, it's it's easy enough for it to do that and not just slam and into it. Wall of Ice makes is a sixth level spell. It is. Okay, perfect. So you, th those of you in the cockpit, and Ayla, you up in the turret, you see this kind of cone of ice form around the front of the ship. Um, just as you're about to slam into one of these huge, frosty rocks, the the cone helps divert you away, and the ship ends up kind of swooping up and around it. And you can see up ahead, there is this thin, narrow corridor of ice. It's two big chunks are slowly closing together. Um, kind of narrowing further and further closer to each other. Meanwhile, Nova, you notice that in the ship, down in the uh, corridor into the main lounge, a vent erupts. A giant gout of uh, gases begins venting into the ship. Part of the infernal engine, this red orangey cloud of mist begins erupting into it. It's chaos. What is everyone doing? Uh... Yeah, everyone can act like, just tell me what you want to do. Dispel. Hey, Lucius. No, um... Good job on the wall of ice. This button is a shield. You can use that as well if you need it. Oh. Okay. Right. Do we need That's it now? That's what does. <laughs> no, not yet. Can we twist uh, the thing so it's thinner? Mayday! Mayday! There's a vent blasting in the in the hallway. I need help. You want to send? You want to send Rethra to do it? You can make a uh, persuasion check to kind of tell Rethra what to do. Uh, so it's just venting gas into like it's like in the main lounge where you guys normally yeah. meet for dinner and things like that. A, a piece of the crystalline wall has erupted and like this metal is bent out of place and this giant okay. gout of orange gas that seems very toxic. Uh, Big Cat is yeah. like hacking and coughing. Um, he's like stumbling around. I mean, it looks like maybe it can be like bent or pushed back in place, but you're gonna need to tell Rethra what to do and how to do it. So it'll be a persuasion um, check. Can I, instead, can I ask Rethra to yep. help me? Because I don't have to breathe, so, but I need strength. So if sure. I could get... You can make I'm, an athletics to get like... advantage. Mm -hmm. Go on. If you uh, want to call yeah. on me, then... Yeah, you can well, just call Ayla more... as well. You can just say, like, Ayla, come Anything. help. <laughs> yeah. um... Strength of 20, baby. Strength of 20. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Anyone strong? I need you to help me, but I need you can't breathe this stuff in. <laughs> That's my cue. Um, um, I'll I'll go and uh, try and help. I will just before I go to do it, hold my breath, but also rage to try and make sure that I sure. really. Sure. So with go Nova pointing the way, you're going to rage. You have advantage. Athletics check for me. Um. A athletics check. Oh, goody! It's a minus two for Kim. No, no, it's for what a no, it's for Ayla. Ayla oh, Ayla's doing Ayla, the strength Ayla, stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's good. that's uh, twenty. Twenty. Okay. Not natural, but uh, twenty. 
No, so you manage to press this plate, um, this metal. You kind of grab it with both hands, holding your breath as this noxious gas is being blasted in your face. And you kind of twist it and push it back in place, um, holding it in place for Nova to come in and magically seal it uh, with her Magitek tools, kind of hold it, like fusing the, the pipe together. Um, and the gas stops leaking into the main lounge. But you do hear something beeping and going off in the engine room, Nova, as this happens. Meanwhile... Quillock, Sentry, and Lucius, and Thalia, you see this narrowing corridor of ice. Um, Thalia can attempt to make a piloting check, but she's going to need somebody to basically help her do that and guide her. Or one of you can do something else uh, if you guys want to try and do something on your own. But you can see, like, it's the classic, you're flying, and if you don't get there quick enough, this thing's going to crush uh, the ship as it arrives. Hmm. I mean, I've I got can a panic good really good well. Water. You, All right, Lucius panics. panics. Level 7 panic. <laughs> sure. I'm like gripping both their chairs in between. <laughs> what do we sure. do? We're going to get crushed, Quill. Uh, I can, I can make a check. portent. Yeah, you're going to portent? So you're going to portent Thalia's I mean, piloting unless, check? I'm sentry has got something. Uh, I, I guess. Know. Has sentry got something? Uh, I don't know. Rihanna's is, making is a there face. I'm just trying to think of what I can do because all my all my spells and stuff are like good for combat, Smashy. and that's about well, you, it. I mean, uh, just tell me, so... and I'll find a way to make it work. But there might okay. be risks. I was thinking of um, could I cast a moonbeam horizontally as like a way to like use the energy to stop the ice from converging. Well, no. What you could do is you could still keep it vertical, but if you put it at the point where they're about to meet. You could try and hope uh -huh. that the radiant energy melts enough of the ice to allow you to kind of get oh. through um, rapidly. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. So, it, so oh, it won't hard. automatically succeed, but it will give Thalia advantage on her piloting check because it's basically giving you a bigger window to try and skim the ship through. Awesome. I'll do that. Because it's only a second level... level spell, right? If you want to cast it at a high level, level it might just... Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. What do you want to do? I'll do it at third level. Third level. Okay. So you don't. Thalia doesn't need to make a pilot check because the moonbeam is wide enough and it deals enough damage that it just shaves off enough of these kind of edges of ice that Thalia twists the twin star vertically and it just scrapes along the sides as these ice uh, giants smash into each other and the ship flies out the other end. Um, cool. And Damn, you kind that's of feel cool. the rush as it goes past. Nova, as awesome. you rush back to the engineering with Ayla and Rethra, you notice that the life support system of the ship, the oxygen oh. in the entire ship, part of the closing the vent and the redistribution of power is vented most of the oxygen. Um, and you're going to need to fix that. The rest of you notice like, the air is getting kind of thin as you breathe. But before we go Nova. on our break, Quillick. Yeah? Oh, looking out, hey, why me? you still are within the shifting oh, straits. No. You can still see more of these things around you. But you glance, and for a second, um, in the distance, you see uh, one of these giant pieces of ice, and it seems massive. It seems to stretch on like almost like a shelf, a continent. And embedded into it, you can see a Valkyrian battleship. Like it's crashed, and then it's been covered over in frost and rime. And then another giant chunk passes past the cockpit. And when you look, that whole ice shelf is vanished. Oh man, that's the coolest and... shit, Mark. I love that. <laughs> and you get the sense something is here in these this ice labyrinth with you. Yep. There is something watching you. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to take a break. Uh... Is it oh, an but it's apex okay. Five minute break. Five minute break. Oh, we just yeah. found the BSF Nostromo. I mean, Kalistra. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Are there any lockers anywhere? <laughs> Jesus. I just had Twenty minutes. Uh, oh man. Uh, not okay. Let's take a five minute break, and then when we come back, we can find out what's happening. Quick panic. Oh, yeah, let's do that. It's a good thing you two yeah. have training in this now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Man, we'll see. so cool. Right, well, Tommy um, Boy, do you want to read some read some shit? I would read it, but I don't have yes. a page. That's cool. I got it. I got it. I got a bro. Hey, bro. You got it, bro? Hey, bro. Nice, bro. Hey, bro. Thanks, bro. <laughs> cool, bro. 
<laughs> I hate that. Um, <laughs> what's the date today? There we go. Right. Firstly, we have a message from Smurfette505. Uh, spent all day wondering why you weren't live. It wasn't until 10 p.m. that I realized it's because it was Saturday and I'm just dumb. Um, <laughs> excited for this stream. Good luck. You guys are the best. P.S. Love the haircut, Re. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't yesterday, well, that's for sure. Natalie Hawthorne with a quarter hundo. Continued generosity from Natalie Hawthorne. Shout out you. to my internet daughters, Kaylana and Chrome, who uh, I met through the High Rollers Discord. Well, there you go. Um, so they know that they are loved, and I will always be there for them, no matter how dark things may seem. Uh, maybe hearing it from you will make them realize it. Well, Kaylana and Chrome, I hope that very, very lovely message from Natalie Hawthorne does reach you, uh, and you do hear it. As If you need it, uh, then there it is. There's your message from, I am just a voice, but it's all from Natalie Hawthorne. Um, Brian Indigo. With a quarter hundo, I will tell you three things. If they come true, will you believe me? The first is, there's a man in a smiling bag. Second, the owls are not what they seem. And third, without chemicals, he points. What? <laughs> what? Uh, what? what? I'm, I'm so ready for these to all be like omens that eventually come true. I'm like, oh my god, I remember. <laughs> The man the in the smiling bag, I know. <laughs> the owls, they're not what they seem. And, oh, and there's one more. Uh, another quarter hundo from Brian Indigo. One last thing. Leo locked inside hungry horse. There's a clue at Leo's house. Oh, that's really creepy. It's like creepy pasta. I'm not really sure if how Leo to react gets, to it. If Leo gets trapped in a hungry horse now, we know that what we need to do, we need to go to a house and get a clue for her. Um, I don't remember. Don't trust the, the owls. Don't trust the owls. Oh, I, I don't have a clue what that person's on about, but sure. What did um, I just walk in on? Really creep, creep me out. I um, don't, we don't know, Kim. Honestly, we don't know. It's best. It's best if you just let us bear the burden, Kim. Uh, Croyd, yeah. one, two, three. <laughs> I all take my first dono. Thank you very much, uh, Mark. I hope you. Uh, I hope I did you a good McService on Friday. Hey, yeah, we went to um, we went to a McDonald's, and the chap there who gave us our food was like, oh, "I really like the game yesterday about Curse of Strahd," and I oh, was shit. like, "Oh, thank you, man." And obviously, because oh. it's like you know, being all safe and wearing face masks and stuff, like we couldn't. It wasn't like let's take a picture or anything. It was just like, "Thanks, man." And then we ate our little McDonald's. We took it and ate oh, it. Oh, nice. So. Did you ask well, from what chicken nuggets? Awesome. No, I didn't because I'm not a diva, Kim. I'm not diva. I'm just hungry. Uh, also, I'm hungry. also, I had I had like nine chicken nuggets and a double cheeseburger and a large fries, oh, okay. and I was like, okay, "This is the first like this is the first McDonald's I've had in three months." It was way too much. I was oh. nearly sick. I was. Oh. <laughs> it's okay though, because of this donation, you basically just got your Happy Meal for free. Isn't that isn't that great? Yeah, you got a Happy sure. Meal, right? The only good thing. No, no. Oh, what? You get toys for because I'm an adult. I'm a um, grown up. Thomas. Toys, though. Jeez. Uh, Mila BK. Um, I'm assuming the BK stands for Burger King, and we're now about to get a Burger King versus McDonald's feud happening here. Uh, this is, is the no most feud. stressful... McDonald's every time. There's no feud. <laughs> this is the mo uh, Burger King. This is the most stressful and emotional thing to listen to while making eggs. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> Very specifically sure while making eggs. Uh, as someone who admittedly suffers from many things, I would just like to say, Mark. You are so inspirational as a DM, and thank you so much for everything you do and include. No, 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 he says. Lustrous hair. <laughs> um, My lustrous hair is hair getting like hair. crazy long now. It's actually getting like really fucking Flowing. long. Uh, it's very yeah, really shorter hot. than yours now. Yeah. It, well, it's just like. I, I can actually, yeah, I, I can actually get a little ponytail, but it would be like okay, a little. Okay, you rat have to do that. Like rat's ponytail. No. Oh, uh, top uh, but I do, I I do now appreciate hair. ladies. So ladies do have long hair. hair, or guys who have long hair. When it's wet, it gets fucking heavy. Like I'm like, yeah, it's actually really fucking heavy when yeah. it's wet. Do what I do, shave it, it off. Yeah. off. I've been thinking. I've been shave thinking, Kim, of doing like a, a shaved side and then swept over. But I don't ah, know. We'll do see. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what gone for the chop. Yeah. Oh my god. The worst thing about it is, yours is literally shorter than mine. 
Mm. It's shorter than yours. It's really so like he, yes, I was like, I'm cutting this off. Shaved. This is going now. I, I had enough. I the 30 degree arm. Saturday was enough yeah. to. Oh, no. Nice. 30 degree awesome. Saturday was enough for Reed to just get rid of it. Yeah, it's too, still, too yeah. hot. I will do the rest <laughs> of the donation. <laughs> yeah. At the end, um, so I will very quickly just go grab go the glass of water that I made and totally forgot about. But first, I made oh. a glass of water. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> That's a fan. Oh, it's so hot in this room. I thought oh, that was a huge... the biggest yeah. fan. Yeah. I, thought, I, got... I thought it was a huge bottle of water <laughs> initially. I was like, wow. <laughs> Damn, he thirsty. <laughs> Hydro homies, where you at? Thirst. Oh. So thirst. Go get your water. Hydro son. homies. Great subreddit. <laughs> Hydro homies, man. Get hydrated, son. <laughs> get hydrated. Mm. <laughs> Right, um, Ed Trot, is there anything unit. on Yogs to quickly read out while Tommy's doing that? Just have a quick look. I'll have a quick look. Because I can't really keep Here the game go. going until he gets back, so... Look at me go. Quickly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, look Why? at him go! Why are you like this? He's going. Here it goes. Here Watch him go. fly. Speed. Speed of the So, the we had Ola Remvi. Thank you very much for your donation. King Kong Alien Jupiter. Thanks for a bit. <laughs> An Ace of Thorns donated, saying, can't think of a message. Just going to offer hugs and best wishes. Stay awesome. Aww. Thank you very much, Ace Thanks. of Thorns. It's a bit warm um, for hugs, but thank you anyway. Hover hug. Hover Social hug. distance elbows. hug. Yeah. Elbows is the new one. Touch Foot elbows. tap. <laughs> yeah. Foot tap. Hey, man. Nice hey. to see you, bro. Hey, nice Touch cheers. elbows. <laughs> Perfect. I don't like um, the touch the foot thing because I'm way too clumsy for that. So Bex did that to me the first somebody. day we were in the office together. We were like, eh, I nearly fell over because I'm way too clumsy. So. <laughs> no, we don't do that no more. I just do the elbows thing. I'm like, what's up, man? You have, to, um, you have to interlink your toes now. You have to get the toes on both your feet. Oh, you just... no. oh, <laughs> I can't move my toes. Uh... <laughs> I couldn't. I could never do that because I can't independently move my toes. So I'd just be like slapping my foot against the other one. Like, <laughs> foot slaps. Can't do. It. Yeah, foot, foot slaps. slaps. That's all I can do. The twitsies. <laughs> Feet are so wrong. Uh, no. Yeah. Mm, my if you've just joined us, we're just having a break. We will be playing some D and D now that Tom is back. Um, Hello. So. Hello. How gross are your feet, to... Tom? Anyway, uh, we're not going into that. We do not need wiki feet <laughs> stuff going on in here, okay? Hell no. So, Hell no. to set the scene, currently, the twin star Longbow, this astral ship that you are using to reach home, is traveling through a section called the Shifting Straits, which you have now come to realize is a massive field of giant ice asteroids, glaciers, shapes that all drift and move about in random patterns. Entering it, first of all, it is difficult to navigate, but also this area seems to be having an unusual effect on the ship and the magitech that keeps the ship working. Quill has also just noticed that there is something here. And in fact, as we see the ship kind of beginning to dart and move behind these glaciers and try and get itself back on the right path, Quillic, with your such impressive passive perception, you oh, notice... You that the shadow of something enormous something colossal moves past one of these giant behind one of these giant ice shapes and then seems to just completely vanish um as you saw the uh the brief crashed ship that vanished uh, along with it um nova as you reach the back the rest of you now begin sort of like <laughs> struggling to take a breath uh nova you reach and you can see yes the magitech the engines are not uh, functioning um the oxygen system correctly what do you do fix it maybe sure. how are you going to do that um so i was thinking i don't know that i have any specific spells that can really do anything uh, so what what is is it like i guess like a valve has come out or like is it just not convert like what um well i think maybe that's the first step maybe make an investigation check to determine what exactly has gone wrong so that you can fix okay. it because right now you're just like okay it's flashing and saying that this system has failed but you don't know what 18 is 
18, okay. So um, you notice that in that maneuver where Lucius created this kind of ice cone to kind of deflect the ship, um, a piece of the ship on the outside, uh, a small, uh, like a large crystal was cracked and that crystal is basically conjuring magical air to fill the ship with. That is now leaking air out into astral space, but it's on the outside of the ship. Oh goody, I've got to go do a spacewalk. Cool. Um, okay. 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 I got this. Okay. Maybe. Well, Ayla and Rethbro are with you as well. So you have those two. Um, meanwhile, up in the cockpit area, uh, you can see the shifting straights. Um, you've made it through this like large ice kind of uh, corridor but now you can see that there are many more splintered tiny pieces hanging in the air um, and as the ship draws close to them they begin to vibrate with the displaced air and energy of the the ship itself and as you draw closer to them they shatter you kind of draw drift close to one and it explodes raining down chunks of ice onto the hole you can hear some of them embedding into the metal and crystalline hull of the ship uh what do you guys do like thalia is trying to drift away from them but trying to keep out of the way of these larger pieces means that she might have to drift closer to some of these uh remaining modules uh, <laughs> man there's mines out here ice mines now mm. pretty much uh no i don't think i can create a spell outside the cockpit that would now target and attack these things before we got to them you could try and lean out of the ship you could open up the doors and lean out but you'd have to hold your breath and you'd be taking some damage these look pretty damaging though to the whole ship so they do. I, I i can just is there a quick way Sally, out so that i can cast spells and attack these she just these jams her thumb back to the main lounge where the the sort of like hatchway right. that opens into the main doorway uh how long do i get out there thought it's like i don't know lucius it, it depends on how uh, physically fit i mean maybe a few seconds uh, a minute i don't know i don't know but if you're going to do something do it now and she kind of twists as the ship has to lurch to one side as Ooh. one of these things okay. explodes just behind the ship i'm going i'll, I'll come with you okay. i'll come with you Okay, right. Sentry and Lucius go down. Um, Ayla and Lucius, uh, sorry, Lucius and not Ayla and Nova. Uh, you guys want to do the same thing? Like, are you going to head out to the main entrancey yeah. bit to get to is the there a... You might be able to get oh, through, it through the ship, but you might yeah, have to like no... access point inside. Yeah. Is there no hatch like in engineering that goes to be. the outside? Or sure, sure, um... sure. Let's say that there is. Okay. Um... Okay, yeah. Can oh, no, I, I'm gonna go. Um, um, I have some rope in my pack. Can I tie a rope around Nova, please? Around her waist? Yeah, absolutely. Before yep. she goes Easy anywhere. Done. Yep. Easy done. And hold on to the other end. Like, wrap it, wrap it around some something, like some Heavy. metal or something, and hold it as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's but like a little ladder. You can like, tie just it to double. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, Goggles down. So we kind of get. So we get Nova kind of climbing up this hatchway to the top of the ship from the, the engineering section from the infernal engines. Meanwhile, uh, on the side of the twin star, kind of around the main body, there are these little, uh, like, fold-down uh, ramps that open up as well. Um, and the two of them open up, and we see Sentry and Lucius. Um, immediately, uh, if you guys basically hold your breath, uh, you can hold your breath for one minute plus your constitution modifier. Um, so whatever your con mod is, um, you can hold it for one minute, one minute plus that. So two minutes for Lucius. Uh, Sentry, I don't what believe about... you need to breathe. Um, and yeah, Nova, no. you have the special air ganassi thing where you can just hold your breath indefinitely, right? As long as you don't get it, like, knocked out of you. So um, technically, I can yeah. cast ten chromatic orbs. Uh, In theory, minute. you can. Can you do, are they, ver do they have verbal components? No. <laughs> okay, you're fine. Just because if you yeah, cast a spell and you have to well. say magic words, that's obviously expelling air that you're trying to hold on to. So, 
Um, it's it the same rules as underwater. The other one is um, immediately as you guys all kind of open the doors and step outside. And it's not enough that it fills the ship, but the air basically goes out. So every so Quillock and Ayla, you guys are going to have to hold your breath as well. So make a note of how long you guys get as the air is all sucked out into astral space. Um, it's not like vacuum space. You're not all sucked out, like kind of blown out of the thing, but it is all the air goes rushing out basically uh, as you are inside. Um, and uh, those of you who are outside, you take five cold damage at the start of your turn. So note down okay. five cold damage. Um, but what do you guys do? I'll go start, make my way towards the, the crystal that needs fixing. Okay, that is going to require either an acrobatics or an athletics check to try and keep a grip as you are climbing your way towards it. Is there going to be an acrobatics for me? Uh, that is, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Does that do a thing? 18 from 18. Kim. Nova. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you basically begin gently kind of like crawling, balancing. You wait for... Uh, Thalia to drift the ship and you kind of lean into it so that you don't go flying off um, using these little handholds as you begin making your way and you can see this large it's been exposed like it looks like it's normally protected by a metal paneling or like some sort of armored plating that's been ripped free and there's this long gouging scar down this uh, glowing blue crystal um, and you can almost see the oxygen and the air kind of filtering out of it um, as you make your way towards it um, uh, Sentry and Lucius, what are you guys doing? Are you just basically like trying to cast spells? Like, how are you going to try and take care of these uh, floating ice particles? So, the way I'm going to try and conserve as much air as possible is to use my font of magic to twin each one. So, I'm throwing two mm -hmm. chromatic orbs out at a time. Two each time. Um, okay. Using up my 12 points, which I have at level three, I can uh, do. Just do it once. Just you know, I'm not going to make you like spend all of your sorcery points. Like, so what level okay. are you casting it at? And then you're you're sorcery pointing it, right? I'm going to cast it at level three, which is five sorcery okay. points, uh, to twin it, and it's a chromatic orb okay. of acid, which I am sending out to two different ones. Yeah. So, and, and, and you're kind my... of choosing the ones as Thalia is drifting close to them. You're kind of uh, taking care of that one. Yeah, whichever's closest. Next to another one. In our line of flying. And also my dichromancy okay. will come off. So depending if the initial chromatic orb destroys each one or not, the yeah. dichromancy could I'm target not, a third. I'm not going to make you roll damage, but yeah, basically with this combination of magic, you are taking care of these icicle particles as you go. You've spent the spell slot. I'm not going to make you roll damage, but yeah, you're cl helping clear a path. Um, Sentry, cool. what are you doing? Uh, I'll be standing uh, by Lucius, um, just mm -hmm. saying like, um, focus on the ones coming towards the ship. I'll focus on the ones that are coming towards us, and I'll use my shield and axe to try and deflect any that are coming towards <laughs> us. Okay, so you're going to try and just, like, any that come close, try and shove them away or try and knock them away with the axe? Yeah. Sure, make a... Uh... What would this be? This is more about... It's less about accuracy because these things are pretty big to hit. It's physically, like, the ability to shove them away, like, quickly enough that before they sort of detonate, you've got to kind of, like, almost knock them away before they reach you. So give me an athletics check. Okie dokie. Plus eight. 17 plus eight. Just 25. Yeah. So... This combination of the two of you, um, any that come near, like Sentry, you're kind of like, you know, leaping out and sort of knocking away with a shield and then stepping back in onto the, the little uh, gangway that leads into the ship. Meanwhile, Lucius, holding his breath, is, is sending out these acidic orbs. As the orbs do hit the icicle particles, they do shatter, um, and you can hear these kind of like, these dull implosions of like... <laughs> as the ice scatters all over the place. Um, and then Sentry, as Sentry's hitting them, they're being sent flying um, by the, the sound, of, uh, by the force of this. They're also flying out and exploding off in the distance. Um, Quillick, that sort of noise, that shape you saw in the background, moving amongst all of these giant ice shapes, mm -hmm. there's a moment where as you're trying to still, you're still kind of plotting a path and guiding Thalia where to go. You see peering at you through a perfectly spherical, almost moon-like piece of ice, you see one giant, almost looks like a nebula, like a, a giant orb that looks like a swirling piece of space, like a, a glowing nebula, and then it blinks. 
and then it oh. vanishes. Uh, and it was I mean, enormous. I can't talk, but we do have messenger rings, so I'll say, like, the moment you've got the thing repaired, the oxygen thing, and you've stopped deflecting things, you need to get back in as soon as you can. We're not alone. Okay. Nova, uh, make... Oh, how are you going to fix this this gem? Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think I have any spells. I don't have anything that can, like, mending or anything like that that can do it, so I guess it's like a arcana check. Um... Uh, this would be... This requires more of a delicate hand because you're trying to seal this gap. So I'm going to probably okay. say this is going to be something more like sleight of hand because this is more about like keeping like a steady hand as you try and fill the gap with like magic gel or something like that rather than using a spell. Yeah. Would a um, mage hand help with that at all? Like, um, not really. I'll let you like do it at a distance. An extra hand but... to like, no, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Um, like just help you an extra, with speed or I'll something? give you an extra D4. You can an throw, D4. throw on an extra D4, yes. sure. Okay, sleight of hand. That's a 19 on the sleight of hand, plus 2, so 21. Sure, yeah. So with the combination of the mage hand kind of helping steady what you're doing and kind of keeping everything compact, you spend some time filling this, this gem this gem with this thick gel that you've pulled from the engineering kit and it seems to seal and then eventually you that hissing that kind of stops and then you see the glow kind of pulse a few times and you're like okay it's fixed can you make an acrobatics check to climb back to where ayla has you um okay. meanwhile that's another five points of damage for sentry lucius and nova um I rolled a natural That's one a natural with one. a three is can four. I, can I try and help her at all? Like, bring so, her back I mean, in? So she doesn't fly off. So normally what would be happening, <laughs> as Nova is crawling her way back, Thalia has to dip the ship, and you are just not ready for it, Nova, and you come flying out, and it's only by this this rope. There is not really, there's not gravity, as I say, so you do kind of float and fly, but there is still enough of a force where, like, oh, you kind of begin spiraling out of control. But Ayla, you've got the rope there and tied on. You're just going to need to pull her back in, which is going to be a uh, strength sure. check. But you are not raging mm -hmm. anymore, so this is just a straight-up check unless you'd like to rage again. No, that's fine. Uh, uh, just a straight up strength. Mm hmm. Nine, nine. 24. Okay. Oh. And then. Let's see. Okay, so you begin pulling um, you begin pulling Nova in, but you can see that as you're doing so, the rope that is attaching the two of you has become covered in rime and frost, and the hemp rope is beginning to break away um, as you're pulling it in. What do you guys do, both you and Nova? There's maybe like another 30 feet between the two of you. But if you're not um, quick, this rope's going to snap. Do you know what? I am going to on a cast far step and teleport okay. back in. So pulling Tiangong free, you cut a hole in space and throw your kind of like with that last bit of force from Ayla's pull of the rope, you throw yourself into the, the dimensional rift and appear next to Ayla who can slam the, the uh, hatch shut uh, above you. Perfect. Okay. Sweet. Um, the rest of you all manage to make your way back inside. No more cold damage. The door shuts. You can finally breathe. Everyone is kind of huffing and breathing as they do. Uh, and as you all kind of like regroup together outside the cockpit, you can see that the large, this labyrinth of ice and, and glaciers, you see a graveyard. You see dozens of broken, smashed ships. Half of them you know, most of them are barely more than just a few scraps of metal and crystalline tubes. Um, you see a few bodies kind of floating Rash. through. And you can just see this place is just littered. Most of them are Valkyrian Empire ships. You can tell the black crystal, the painted uh, star and twin swords of the of the Empire. But you also see a lot of other vessels, all different shapes and sizes, um, scattered around this place. And you notice that the, the ice has almost formed like a ring around this graveyard. Uh, and Thalia is kind of drifting the ships in amongst it all. What do you guys do? Uh, maybe turn off the engines, let us drift for a bit. It, 
What if it's out there might be able to see the thrusters or something? Uh, uh okay. I think I'm what, gonna what go do back you mean, down whatever's out there? It. So I'm, I'm just... on the guns, just ready. Okay. Yeah. You begin scanning around Ayla, and like Quill, you just see a shadow drift between the ice and then it vanishes. It's there for a split second as you look for it and then it goes. It vanishes. But there is a, a presence you can feel. Uh, Nova, you also feel a presence. You feel that power swelling in Tiangong. That familiarity that tells you that somewhere there is a shard. Oh, you, no! It's in oh. this big thing! And I... Th oh! <laughs> mm, why? So as the, ship, as the ship turns, as Thalia disconnects the engines and you just become a piece, another ship floating amidst skeletons, you finally see the creature that has been following you. It is enormous. It dwarfs the Twin Star. It dwarfs the Valkyrian battleships that you've seen. It is a creature like nothing you have seen before. Its body is made of frost and starlight with swirling nebulas in its eyes. Its rime-covered serpentine form is dotted with the wreckage of Valkyrian and pirate ships, half-frozen in the icy armor across its body. One particularly large warship has clearly been rammed into its side, causing a great gouging long scar along its twisting body. Barely visible, you can see constellations inside its body like motes of light, and pulsing runes that swirl within it. The constellations and the runes are ones you all mostly know. You've seen them in temples to Siaska on Erois. However, spreading out from the crashed warship that left the deep scar, you can also see lines of red and black that pulse and twist like tendrils, turning some of those constellations and lights into an ominous dark red. Oh, it wasn't bad enough. Like the giant astral serpent thing, the entire shifting straight is a big old serpent thing, and it's Hadar touch too. Awesome. <laughs> but it has constellations well, that we recognize though. Yeah, you've seen them on yeah. the painted on the roof. When you've gone into a temple of Siaska on the roof, they paint the night sky full of stars, and the constellations in those temples, the runes of Siaska, are in this, like, they're, they're floating and swirling amongst this creature's body. Yeah, it is a Siaskan defense, but still, Hadar touched. Or maybe, wait, is this like... Wait, is the shift wait, this is, this is, this is the team? thing! But what if this is the thing? The, what, it's Siaska's what's... protector, or guardian, that needs its mind cleansed. Because oh. it's Hadar attached. Oh. oh, but it's really big. Oh. So big I mean, uh, the the creature itself. There's no red in its eyes, but this ship you can see like a wound, like a festering wound. This ship that's crashed. The black and red is spreading out from that, and Nova, the shard of Tiangong, is in that crashed ship. Ship, it? Right. Know. Okay. We need to we need to get that crashed ship out. Is is it? Oh. Is it looking because, at us now that we're century... It's yeah. it the 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 creature is drifting around this graveyard, watching it. It doesn't look like it knows where you are, but it is waiting. It's stalking this area. <laughs> okay. How the hell do we get to the ship? And then get onto it ourselves. While it's a giant Arcane serpent gate. thing, <laughs> we don't know I if could, there's air I, on the ship. I could fly you close enough. Um, I mean, those those Valkyrian ships—they're pretty sturdy. As long as it's it's structurally sound, you should have air and gravity. But I can fly you close enough 
to it, uh, but then I'm, I can't stay. I can't linger. I'll, I'll have to. You'll have to jump off and or teleport or something and uh, deal with this whatever you call it, Hadar touched. If you could stay within a 500 foot radius, I could always cast Arcane Gate and we can get back onto you. I can get within 500 feet of the crashed ship, yes, but staying there, I mean, that's going to be tough. It's going to be hard enough just trying to avoid that thing. It's massive. And if that thing hits the Twin Star, I mean, I don't know how long I'll last. Okay, I mean, we, we you don't need to stay close it. the whole time. No, and then you need I, to. I, evade. Evade. I might have to leave. Yes, I can hide amongst this debris here. I think, but you'll need to send word to me when you want me to come and get you. If, I can do if that. you're successful, um, or you have those rings, the ones you communicate with. You could give me one of those, and then I can stay in contact with you. I can update you on anything. Uh, the other thing is, is Nova. You, I remember when we were leaving the the spaceport, uh, the starport. You need to be able to see where you create that gate. Yes, that means you'll yeah. probably have to come on. You'll probably have to gate onto the creature's body and then make your way into the ship if it's closed I was, off. I was thinking it's better if I if I if I use it to get back to you instead. Ah, if right, I cast yes. it from well, there case, onto you, I can I can fly the ship close enough for you to jump. I can't promise it will be an easy landing, but I can get you close enough. Um, here, take my ring. All I right. think constant communication the... will be vital rather than it, single messages. All right. Um, I, I'll take this. And she puts it in and she begins the process of attuning to it. Right. Okay. Uh, contact us when it works. Keep contacting yes, us. Yes. I, I must admit, I have I've never seen anything like this creature. Uh, this is beyond me, I'm afraid. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to give you much Let's not uh, dwell on it much, because I'm about to implode. Let's just focus on the task at hand and get the job done. Right. All right. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, Rethra Maybe. looks at you, Ayla. What, I, should I go with you? Should I stay here? I mean, I'm happy to jump on that thing and fight something if you need to fight something, but... Sounds good. I don't think... Sure. I don't know what we're doing counts as fighting. I think it's... We just need to get I mean, we've, that... We've seen Hadar's ship out of there. before. Uh, there's probably something in there. I think but we need to help you. Help you. I think... She might need help. She might need she engineering did. support, something, yeah. a hand, so... Stay sure, here. I can stay. I Like I said, I'm not... I mean, after what I've... I just don't think I'm going to be... If I freak out down there, I'm going to be more of a hindrance than anything else. Stay and here and help I us won't. get back again. Sure. Okay. Done. Uh, Thalia's like, yes, my dear, there's a big turret. Point it at something that you need to kill and push the button. I think I can handle that. I know what, a, I know what an arcane lance is, Captain. Uh, and he's like, tuk, 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 goes up into the turret. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess gather up by the gangway and let's try and make this work, I guess. Uh... I mean, I'll right. guidance her for piloting maneuvers. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, sure. That that would be good. D4, sure. Let's get a D4. Just in case she does need let's to make, make a check. She does Nothing. need to make a check, a piloting check. Okay, 25 on her piloting check. That's so, the third 25. she waits. Thalia waits for the head of this serpent with its big nebula eyes to just turn away from the center of the graveyard. And then she slams forward on the large uh, levers that control the, the engines and they erupt into infernal fire as the twin star rockets forward. You don't hear but you feel this thing roar. roar. This powerful reverberation just rockets through the entire vessel. And you feel this cool. immense, magical, divine presence just kind of blast through you. But Thalia just bombs it towards this long, deep scar that you can see. Um, 
the, the ship gets closer and closer, and you can see the armor plates on this thing rise up like mountains, and Thalia is dipping and weaving between them uh, as she gets closer and closer. The doors, the gangways open up, and this rush of wind and, and force kind of flies through you. Hold on! Get ready to jump! Now! And then she dips the ship in a sort of, like, diving motion, uh, just as the long scar stretches on before you. And I need all of you to make acrobatics checks as you Shit. jump out. Uh, okay, well, who's the least acrobatic? I'm gonna rage first. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna rage. I'm okay. I think well, this enough. is very suitable for rage. Uh, Do you have to I'll... portent before, or can you pick? Or the roll, yeah. I'll, I'll pick... Nova to portent. Mm. Okay. Well, he's done it now, so... Who's the one that uh, can't acrobatics so much? Yeah. Eat, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, for some reason. Oh, athletics. I was thinking of athletics. My bad. I'm acrobatic. Oh, well. Yeah. If you want to change it, because if you got the wrong skill, yeah, change I'm happy it. to change it. Change it. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking. Cause... I was thinking um, athletic. Like that. Sentry is good at, as at athletics, so I'll I'll do Sentry instead. I got mixed up Watch on acrobatics. Roll a two now. So what are you portenting on Sentry? Fourteen for Sentry. Fourteen. 14. Cool. All right. I'm so gonna what's your total sentry? Uh, okay. For the extra D4. So that is 7 plus... Oh, you don't need to roll. You, you, you get a 14. Oh. Uh, Tom's using 14, his portent on you. So your roll is a 14 plus your acrobatics 14. bonus. That's just a 14. All right. Plus D4. Plus uh, D4, which 15. was... Ooh. Kim, is that a Three. new acrobatics with one, or is that an old no, one? No, that's not. That's an old um, one. I was just going to ask, like, is this... Uh... Oh, wait, no, it's one minute. Forget it. I thought it was ten minutes. I thought Fast Start was ten minutes. It's not. How long? How far uh, is Fast Step? 60 feet? Yeah. I'd say that, like, you're going to hit the, la the tail end of ten minutes when this is all happening on, so if you want to just Fast Step the last 60 feet, to the uh, ground. No, I, I check. It's concentration up to one minute. I thought it was 10 minutes. It's, oh, it's right. One yeah. minute. Okay, I got yeah. you now. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, right. I'd roll so a 13 total, then. So is, and So total 13 for Nova, total 15 for Quillic, total yep. 14 for Lucius, total 17 for Sentry, because you got Portent 14 plus 3 from Driven to Purpose. Ayla? 17. 17. <laughs> Classic. The two big melee bruises come slamming down <laughs> exactly where they need to. Um, you can see that the the entrance to the, the Starbane warship is maybe like, I know, uh, let's say sort of maybe 60 feet ahead of you. Um, and, and you can already feel like there's not any oxygen, the freezing cold. On, on this thing, it's freezing cold. You land, chunks of ice come up, superhero-style landing, as all these icicle shards fly up around you, um, but you can tell that you're going to start taking cold damage. For Lucius, mm -hmm. Quill, and Nova, however, you land about 60 feet behind Sentry and Ayla, where they've kind of, you've you've fallen out a little bit of a way, and you are going to take some damage um, as you land oh. as well. Shit. Uh, so that is going to be 19 bludgeoning damage as oh, you slam into the ground, spinning, rolling, um, as you jump out of uh, the moving astral ship. Um, and you are about, you're about 120 feet to the uh, warship's entrance. As you land, you can feel the power like rumbling through this creature's body. You can see the motes of light are giving you enough visibility to see by, but the biting cold uh, swoops all over you. You can also see that as you land and you begin to kind of gather yourselves up to run for this warship, these little kind of forms of ice are beginning to kind of get up on little arms and legs, uh, stretching oh up, God. pulling themselves free from its body. And there's like 20, 25 of them. They're all pulling themselves free and they're going to start running towards all of you. We're going to roll initiative. Holy yeah. shit. We're in the vacuum. Uh, uh, on a supernatural, godlike dragon nebula creature. I thought I touched. I ice, it's a ice, ice Nebula Dragon. Yeah. Ice Nebula it Dragon. It's not an Astral Dreadnought. I Little tell you if it's an Astral Dreadnought. Ice creatures on it as well. 
Yeah, right, um, cool. just because I'm getting confused by some people, because there's some a couple of misclicks here. Yeah, right, total initiative, geez. Nova 13? Uh, 15. Oh, that was your acrobatics. That was yeah, acrobatics, yeah. And that's 15, what I'm getting confused yeah. by. Century, uh, what was your total? 16 total. 16, Ayla? 24. 24, oh, Lucius. Nice. 17. 17. De advantage. I get advantage, Tom. It's on a initiative, uh, that's why. Uh, well, Ayla, you are the first to react. Yeah, you've got about 60 feet before the entrance to this warship, and you can see it's partially embedded. It's got these big, black, crystalline bulkheads, but you can see, like, systems that you've seen on, like, the um, uh, Aegis V, like, the same sort of, like, Magitech systems that have worked for you before. You recognize them as they will open the doors, but you also notice that three of your companions are about 60 feet behind you, and there's about 25 of these creatures all about to swarm on top of you. Um, um guess I'm going back to the squishies. Um, sure. Run I, it will take my whole turn probably to get back there. Um, well, you've got 45 feet of movement, we'll, so you can move 45 feet closer yeah. to them. Um, mm -hmm. and they're 15 feet away at that point. Uh, you also, at, sorry, at the beginning of your turn, take five cold damage. Is, uh, you said there's about 25 of these things, right? They're Can only I... little. They're like, they look like small little imp-like creatures, but made of ice, and they're kind of pulling themselves free. Um, they're almost like antibodies. Like they're you're atta like they're defending the body mm. against uh, an intruder. Cool. If okay. I was to throw the hammer, how many of the little shits would I hit? Uh, well, let's see. If I said it's a line, right? But it's only like 30 how long is it? Sixty feet, I think. Sixty feet. <laughs> so I'd say you can get six of them. No, twelve of them. Okay. Because you can just target yeah. a line yeah. of them and just every every five feet you can hit one of these things i will throw jihama okay yeah. so 12 of these things 15 uh, uh 15 will okay. hit the one at the end let me do the deck saving throws for all the other ones okay. what's the dc uh 16 16 right yeah. fail fail pass so i've got three failures one pass so far that's another pass that's a failure uh that's a failure pretty good that is a failure nice that is a failure that's nine so cool. far that's a pass he's looking at pictures of us more. that is a failure, <laughs> failure. <laughs> right. seven seven fail Five pass. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, and then the, the last, well, the technically end, one of them, yeah, you hit him with your normal attack. The, the dude at the end will take uh, nine points of damage from the hammer. Mm hmm. Wait. And then all of the rest of them yes. give me the lightning damage. And the lightning damage will be. Wait, no, he takes. Sorry. My damage has gone up one, so he takes 10 damage ten. because yep. my mod increased. Uh, the damage for the lightning. Oh my god, I rolled a 5 and a 6, first of all. 11, oh. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17 damage on lightning. <laughs> so the failures take half of that. You swing the Howling Tempest, and with one mighty blow, it transforms into a lightning bolt and arcs down the entire side of this... this scar that you're currently about to traverse down um, as you turn around and hurl it uh, down one length of this entire corridor and every single little moat that it's hit explodes into a 10 foot sphere of ice shards that just erupt <laughs> as they just pop each one being hit by the bolt of lightning until eventually it turns into a hammer, smashes the last one that explodes into pieces, and then <laughs> flies back into your hand, nice. an entire line of these things decimated. Oh my god. That felt good. Um, I know they're only yeah. little, but they can overpower you if there's 25 of them. So yeah, and you notice that when they died, 
they exploded in quite a big radius. Like, if they had been closer to you and you'd hit them, that would that explosion of ice would have hit all of you. Oh. Um, but you, they haven't moved yet, so they're currently about 30 feet away. Uh, Lucius, not within Virian, Elan, Elan, each other. Blow each other up. Blast them. Well, they all died the same to the same attack anyway, so it's just like... Right. Are we all taking cold yeah. damage at the start of our turns, or is it like five the end cold of damage. round? Five, five cold damage, please. Start your turn. Okay. And what's the distance between me and these little little buggers? So the first one of them is about 30 feet. Again, this is Theater of the Mind, so imagine that they're all going to be able to swarm you in about a turn of movement. You have got 120 feet before you arrive at the warship. It's, uh, warship's doors. Ayla is about 15 feet in front of you. Come on, everybody, let's move forward. Uh, I'm going to start charging towards them, towards where we need to go. And ahead of me, I'm going to cast a vitriolic sphere, which is a 20-foot sphere, on them as much as I can cluster 120 feet, uh, 150 foot range. So I can basically pick where I want that to be. Yeah, so you can catch, because they're kind of all clustered together, I'd say you can catch about nine of them all in one vitriolic sphere. If you target it further down the line, you can catch okay. about nine of them. Because it's not a line, but you're catching them like the ones that are in a in a spherical area. But you can catch yeah. nine of them. Okay, so, cool. same throws, I'm guessing. Uh, so it's a 17. Uh, DC 16 is a deck save. How much damage does it do, like, uh, normally? Uh, 10d4 acid and another 5d4 the start of its next they turn physically, the of its next turn. they physically even if they pass the save it's enough to kill all nine of them so you watch as this giant <laughs> sphere of orange ice just appears and melts nine of these things into puddles that just you know just cover the entire uh, area of this creature's back as lucius is just running forward in this frost uh, icy cold winds created by this creature's back um, as you rush forward Anything so else? I have a reaction, right? Yes. As well. Uh, when I next take cold damage, I'm going to cast uh, Absorb Elements, which will absorb... Okay, sure. Well, you can just do that as a reaction. You can tell me when you do that. You don't have to say ahead of time. You can just say, when I take cold damage, oh, I'm going to use I this. I basically get resistance to it. Mm -hmm. And if I did a melee attack, it would add a d6 sure. to it. Cool. Sentry. Uh, but I'm basically mitigating damage. Yeah, so you can see can that I they're about that? 60 feet behind you. Can I move 30 feet closer and then cast a moonbeam between uh, between the spellcasters and the little little blah blah little blah, blah guys? Yeah. Sure. I mean, at the moment, thanks to Lucius and Ayla, there's about four of these creatures left. They are still running towards you, but you can easily catch all four of them in the moonbeam. Cool. Nice. Sure. Alrighty. We'll do that. So, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. so they, they take 3d10 3d10 on their okay turn. and then saving throw con 15 con 15 fail fail nice fail pass ah, roll some damage for nice. me please so 3d10 so that's 24 and then half as much oh for the one that succeeded you, this beam just descends from the sky and just you watch again as these three these all these creatures just pop just all of them just erupt in these explosions of ice damage as you destroy them um but yeah there are no more creatures between you and the doors um giving everyone a, a currently a clear path and you said you wanted to move 30 feet closer to your teammates yeah so you're currently 90 feet away from the door so you've moved back 30 okay. feet with 90 feet towards yeah. the door no, Nova Vija, uh, 120 feet to the yes. door. No enemies. Gonna run. Just gonna Just run. run in dash. A, 60 yeah, feet. 60 feet in a. So if I remember, we have Ayla moved 45 feet back. So this is 15 feet from these guys. So something. I'll figure that out. <laughs> uh, no math. Sentries, uh, 90 feet back. Uh, 30 feet back. Uh, Okay, so Nova is, I think, currently the one in the lead because you dash, so you're about 60 feet ahead of everyone else, which means you have 60 feet to go before you reach the doors. Um, but you don't see any enemies, and you're just going to dash. Quillek and Kalar. Yeah, I'll Take do a double dash as well. Damage, by the way. Okay. Yeah, don't forget so your cold Nova, damage, yes, Quilly. Five, five cold damage, five cold damage, five cold damage to yeah, Sentry yeah. as well. Nice. Um, and it. so Nova and Quill are now uh, 60 feet away from the door. Um, 
Ayla was 60 feet and then moved 45, so Ayla is 105 feet away. Lucius moved 30 feet closer, making him 90 feet away. So is Sentry. Uh, so Lucius is Sentry. What would have been the monsters go? There are obviously no monsters, but you begin to see that on the sides of this creature's serpentine body, another 25 of these things begin pulling themselves free. <laughs> Oh, and begin raising themselves. Um, but that's their whole turn, is to do that. So we go to Ayla. But no more charges uh, on the hammer. Running 90 feet. Please. So you just basically, back. you're like 15 feet from the door. Like you're like da, 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 yeah. da, da, just running towards it. Uh, Lucius. I also will dash uh, as fast as I can. And okay. I get resistance uh, on this damage. Yes, so again, five feet of cold, uh, five cold damage to Ayla. So you are now 30 feet from the door, Lucius, um, and you gain resistance, so you only took half of that. Uh, You're rounding down or damage. up? Uh, uh, you round, One damage? Um, wow. You round down, so it's two damage, because it's half of cool. five, so it'd be two. Um, okay, so Lucius is about 30 feet from the door. Ayla is 15 feet from the door. Um, but these cre these creatures are beginning to swarm, no longer being attacked in mass numbers. Uh, many of them are beginning to uh, scramble towards you. Sentry. Um, is uh, Quill within distance of me if I run 30 feet? How far is Quill? Uh, so you were 90 feet away. So Quill is 30 feet ahead of you right now. Okay, can so I can move run next to Quill and, ca yeah, and cast protection from energy and choose cold damage? Sure. Oh, yeah. Perfect. So you get resistance to cold damage. Cool. We'll take your five cold damage sentry. <clears throat> yep. Got it. Uh, any bonus actions? Uh, no, that's me good. Thank you. That's you good. Nova? Uh, I'll keep running to... Uh, I'm guessing it's another 60 feet from me, right? There's yeah. another 60 feet, yeah. All right. Oh, so Nova is, is the... at the door. Is the door open? The door is not open, but you can see that there are the the same Magitech kind of like systems that were on Aegis Five, like these panels. Um, you can see them, uh, and as you approach, you can see the kind of sputtering of arcane magic uh, coming from it, and you can hear a very warped sort of. Please present your identification. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. <laughs> that was a good voice. That was good. Ball. <laughs> well, your action to dash, so that's the end of your turn. Quillic yeah. and Kalar. Five uh, halved, um, so two cold damage, five cold damage for Nova. Two for me, awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm 30 from the door, right? Or 60 from the door? Uh, you are currently I'm, 60 I'm... feet from the door. You and Sentry are the furthest back now. Okay. Um, and how far are the uh, actual horde from us? About 30 feet. Mm, so they'll catch up to Sentry. Uh... Okay, I mean, can I use some magic missiles? I want to do four magic missiles uh, to hit the ones that are in, like, clusters so that if they explode, they explode and set off, like, chain reactions among the horde. <laughs> nice. Sure, yeah. Um, you do... So, yeah, roll the damage. Um, are you targeting, like, four... Are you going to send each missile at an individual creature? Or are you going to be like one, two until it blows up, one, two till it blows up, three, four till it blows up? Yeah. So I'm. Um, uh, I'll send out. I'll send out five. But yeah, hit, hit, hit until it blows up, and then move to a different target. Um, okay. So roll the damage for me. Let's see how many you actually manage to destroy. So four, then two, then four, then three, then three. So uh, the first well, three destroy well, one. And then the next two damage one, but don't quite destroy it. Um, uh, as the plus first one, to one all of those. oh, plus one to all of those individually. Uh, yeah, so, so five, five eight. Three, same same cool. thing. Unfortunately, still applies. Um, okay. It's just that the second one looks very badly injured. When it explodes, as the one that you pop with the first three missiles, like these bolts, kind of slam into it. As it explodes, the ice shards don't even affect the ones around it. The ice shards just sense. wash over them. They are immune to cold. So. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> Damn it! That makes sense. Right on their go, uh, tw the f the remaining twenty four of them 
uh, swarm. Um, and rather than doing 24 individual attacks, they basically make one attack against each of you, because uh, they can reach all of you. They're all kind of spread out in a line along this corridor. They just swarm towards all of you um, and start surrounding you, basically. Uh, they're going to make an attack against each of you with advantage, and if it hits, it will do damage, basically. Um, and then now, if any of them are destroyed, they have the risk of potentially harming you as well. So we'll just go around in order. So sentry, whoops. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. No. You manage to bring the shield down as they start swarming around you, trying to scrape and claw at you with these icy cold um, fingers and claws. Quillek. Uh, can I protect oh, Quill? You, uh, you can, so that would be the first roll. So that would be a 13 to hit Quill. No, it doesn't. Okay, so Sentry manages to interpose herself between, uh, you know, you and all of these creatures trying to swarm around you as well. Uh, Ayla, that is a uh, 11 to hit you. So you're kind of knocking Narp. them to the side. Big sweeps of the hammer sending these things flying around you. Uh, Lucius, that is a 19 to hit you. Nah, doesn't do it. Nah, I think it does, doesn't <laughs> it? You're a liar. Uh, 17, 20 well, points of cold damage as all of these things swarm around you and are like grasping at you, their icy cold hands clawing around you. So absorb elements, right? Last until... Yes. Oh wait, that's just when I take the damage. Uh, so, story for next melee. Have resistance to the triggering damage type until the start of my next turn. When did you activate it? last turn as a reaction when i took my cold damage which is at the start of your turn so you would have got it to end of your next turn yeah so you still have it you still have cold so you still have cold resin so you take 10 cold damage instead nice as this shield of energy is kind of absorbing some of their impacts protecting you from it uh nova against you oh that's a natural 20 i'm afraid matey uh for a 24 Shit. yep they swarm around to the doorway. Whoops. That's going to be... Uh, so that's going to be 12, 24, 30, 32. 37 points of cold damage as just no, like eight, nine of these creatures just swarm on top of you, Nova, pulling at your arms, pulling at your feet. This icy cold touch just completely sending chills down into your bones as you try and pull yourself free. Um, but it is Ayla's go. Can I uh, run up to the door with my 15 feet? Mm -hmm. Does it open yep. like it did with me on Aegis 5? It does. When you run up, Ooh, it, you nice. just hear a Welcome, right? Nice. And the, whatever name it was going to call you is lost to this warping effect, but the door <laughs> opens. It of kind of it judders, and of you can it see was. it opens about halfway, creating a crawl space, and then it seems to be frozen in place from ice and frost that's built up on its side. But you can duck under and crawl under it if you want to. Um, uh, these I creatures don't get attacked shopping. opportunity, by the way, as you like run away from them. They're so single-minded, they don't make reactions. They just kind of jump on you, and then you can kind of throw them off you and, and dash. Okay, you like I will roll under Jador. Can I have a look in before I roll? Uh, well, you <laughs> glance in, <laughs> and the very brief glance that you look into, it is pitch black apart from there is a very faint pulsing red light coming down the sides of the corridor. Okay. I will duck inside and have a look, I guess. I don't know what I can do in here for you light. You start looking around. Because... Well, you, you start looking around and then you notice that the door, the, the weak energy of the door, it's beginning to slowly fall. Um, where it's only can reached I about halfway and... trying to close again. Hold it up. Strength check. Yep. Athletics. Athletics? Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh my god, I rolled a 19. So that's 19 plus 9. You just yeah. grip it and your muscles kind of bulging and bursting. Your tattoos flaring to life with lightning. You hold up this heavy uh, crystalline door, keeping it in place for the others to run under it um, as you are rushing. You still take 5 cold damage just because uh, you started your turn outside. Um, sure. Cool. Uh, Lucius. I am running in. 
Okay, so yeah, you kind of do the same thing. Roll. Kind of throw these things off, Ugh, roll in underneath. Uh, you take five cold damage at the start of your turn. You can easily make it inside before these things get a chance to follow you. Um, anything else? Uh, what I might do is when I sausage roll in. Oh wait, it, does it take a dash for me to reach there? Sausage no, roll. You can move. You can reach the doorway in thirty feet. So. Anyone that is struggling with these creatures, I will throw a chromatic Nova. orb of acid. Nova is definitely struggling. In which case, I'll twin it and make sure I hit two of them. Sure. On okay. Nova. Yeah. Make your tech rolls. Uh, very well. Acid. Ding dong. 12 for the first one. That is not enough. It seems to kind of like the orb bounces off the icy carapace around this thing as it flies off to the side. But the second one... You did twin it. 26. That one nails it. Um, as the For orb of acid, acid strikes the creature, uh, it completely envelops the creature, which then explodes into a shard of ice mm -hmm. uh, and shards. Uh, Nova, can you make a dexterity saving throw for me, please? Mm hmm. Um, so this will be a plus, new. plus three. New. I know. <laughs> that will be a five. Okay. You take uh, four you more points of cold point. damage. Oh, this thing explode. explodes, showering you in ice. Um, you always do this to me, Lucius. <laughs> well, I'm trying to help. It's uh, sentry. A uh, dichromancy. What's your action? Oh, I'll dichromancy, do you want to just... Yeah. <laughs> On Nova. Sure? Yeah, do On you Nova. Uh, no, I'll hit one that's further away that could impose a threat to anyone running towards that's the door. Good. Yeah, easily destroyed, and no threat to anybody else with the ice shards. Sentry. Um, can I use my flame lance and try and clear a path for me Absolutely and Quill? Absolutely, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a... Is it a saving throw for me, or? It is do, 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 a 13 deck save, yeah. And what's the range? Is it 30 foot line? 30 foot by 5, yeah. Yeah, so 30 foot, so uh, 6 of them, basically. Uh, first one is a fail. Second one is a fail. Third one is a fail. Fourth one is a pass. Fifth one is a pass. Sixth one is a fail. So four fail to succeed. Uh, so roll up that nice. damage for me. That's uh, don't forget 20. your five points of cold damage. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, there's fucking be... six of them yeah. destroyed. So you just <laughs> clear a path um, ahead of you. Um, make a... No, actually, Nova and Lu Lucius and Ayla were the only ones in threat of being hit by explosions, and they're inside now. So you oh. annihilate six in your way, and oh, no. there is nothing now threatening you um, from getting into the the ship. Um, do you want to nice. do you move, or are you just going to stay where you are? Because you're sixty feet. Uh, can I, yeah, can I start moving? Say to like messenger ring crew, let's get moving. Up. Ayla's okay. just holding the door open, like Jesus Christ! Come on! The earth up! <laughs> I'll assist while I'm there. Yeah, I sure, yes. Yeah. Lucius actually on. does help as well. Like, you are, you know, somewhat strong, and the two of you are holding this door up. Um, so Sentry is now 30 feet away from the entrance. Uh, Nova. Um, you can so just roll inside. Grappled? Like, You're some not grappled. Not grappled no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, no. Narratively, case... they swarmed on top of you, but you can throw them off. And... A sausage roll inside, please. A sausage roll inside. Yeah. Um, you kind of roll inside. Roll. Um, you can see these things um... are going to make a rush for the, everyone at the door, but yeah, you can get inside. <clears throat> Um, could I c create a little bonfire um, yeah. by the entrance? Right. Um, yeah. It's five foot, so like Nova, yep. uh, not Nova, I'm Nova, Quill and Sentry should still be able to run through without getting damaged. But you can um, basically block off a part of the doorway so that if anything yeah. runs on top of it, they take fire damage. Yeah, perfect. These yeah, things so definitely I'm going to create bonfire. The fire, by the way, when you conjure it, they're, and the same with the flame lance, all of these things, like, they don't really have faces. They're just like blocks of ice with, with arms and legs, and they're just like... And they scatter <laughs> away from it, throwing their arms up wildly, uh, terrified of the fire that you've created. Uh, oh, Quillic. Uh, I know I'm leaving the sentry out in the cold, but I'll uh, dash to the door. Um, yep. and dash. The cats uh, five roll. cold damage, please. Oh, yes. Uh, am I still got the resistance? Uh, yeah, I believe yeah. so. Protection. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, let's see. Perfect. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll double dash through the door and maybe sausage roll if I've oh. got the time. 
Okay, so Best Sentry, call. you are going to bear the brunt. So Sentry and then Lucius and Ayla, you are the ones who are going to bear the brunt of the next wave of attacks. So six, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine. So there is a good 14 of them left. Um, so seven of them basically swarm around Sentry and seven of them swarm towards Ayla and Lucius. Um, so I'm going to make an attack against each of you individually, just one, but I'll up the damage and they'll have advantage on the attack roll. So Does Sentry, that... It will, yes, it will destroy some of them, but they will get their attacks first, Kim. So okay. they will basically it will wipe them they out, but they'll get a small amount of attacks. Run themselves into uh, it. 18 to hit Sentry, which I believe is a fail, because your AC is 20. But again, they're just like grabbing onto your arms and legs as you're kind of like moving through them, and they're just like, nah! <laughs> <laughs> Grabbling, unable to do anything. Um, Ayla, that is going to be a 22 uh, to hit you. But there's not there's not as many of them as a lot of them have been taken out by the fire so that's going to be eight points of cold damage um as they kind of scrabble and claw at you from underneath the door kind of going for your legs um and then lucius that is a 20 to hit you and that is nine points of cold damage as they're scrabbling to get past you and uh, attack the thing that they believe is threatening i'll the uh, cast another absorb elements okay so you can half that to four I need that. Uh, and then Ayla. Uh, so it's Ayla and Lucius, and then Sentry, I'm going to guess, is going to make the final movement to get under the door. So Ayla and Lucius, yeah. what do you guys want to do? Do you want to do anything? Uh, the ones that were really that swarmed you, the doors... attacked, you can't. I can't Slowly do anything. Closing. So I have to just wait. Sure? I have to just wait. Okay. Lucius? Uh, yeah, I'll just support the door until everyone's inside and then drop the door. Okay, smart. So, Sentry, you're the last one. You come running in. Do you do like? Do you slide under it? Do you do like a roll? Like you've got all these creatures in front of you, but you're strong enough that you can just barrel through them if you want. Could do a little Indiana Jones slide, just like, like under the door, like slide. Yeah. The the slippery ice gives you method. the perfect uh, kind of moment. You slide through, and then Ayla and Lucius. As soon as you're clear, you drop the door, and it crushes, leaving behind a few twitching hand ice hands uh that come slamming down yeah. and are broken off uh, once you are inside the corridor that unnatural chill of outside fades your breath you can kind of feel um oxygen sort of fill your lungs it's not warm it's still freezing cold but not so much that it's damaging your skin and your extremities um, uh, but you it is completely black uh, those of you who do not have dark vision it is completely dark inside apart from this very 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 faint red light that just doof, doof, along the sides of the walls uh um, dancing lights right so yeah. hang on let's go around so lucius cast dancing lights sentry did you have a thing uh yeah can i um summon echo and send him ahead mm -hmm. to have a look around yeah so you for it's not been a while but you create this um and i can't remember did we decide that echo looks differently now that you've upgraded to sentinel prime or is yeah. he still he's not so like barbie and like disheveled he's got like little armor plates around him now still with, like little bits of branches sticking out but he looks more mm. rugged more solid yeah more armored yeah, yeah more so solid you create this little uh metal sphere with a glowing golden eye i guess now because your matrix yeah. is now golden so um he kind of <laughs> floats up looks around bobs up and down and then begins drifting uh nova did you have something um it says that um tian gong has dark vision up to 60 feet so how would that work like i guess I mean, yeah he, well they can see they sorry yeah but... They, but the problem is, is they can only say yes and no. So you can say, Tian Gong, can you see? Yes. Yeah. Tian Gong, is there danger ahead? No. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't. I don't really have uh, much I can do, but I like no. look, look towards Quill and just be like. <coughs> well, the dancing lights fill the area now, and it's all you know lighting. But yeah, you can see Nova has got chill blains and frostburn all over her. Isn't her Lucius skin. like barely alive? Yeah. Yeah, Lucy I think both of them are super hot. very heavy. We're shivering injured. in a corner. Okay, I'll do two fourth level cure wounds on both. Uh, which is quite a lot of healing. It should be anyway. Two fourth level? What would that be? Cure wounds. That's, 48 uh, plus, four one. plus five. Uh, for both of you. So, for Nova, 24. For Lucius. Thank you. 
20, 21. Yeah. 21. Oh, 22. Sorry, it's plus 5, isn't it? So 24 and 22. 22. There you go. Uh, and also, I want to do an Arcane Eye, which does have dark vision. Okay. Ooh. So, with uh, Echo and Arcane Eye. But Lucius, did Lucius not just cast Dancing Lights? Yeah, but we can send Echo and Arcane Eye forwards. Scouting. All right. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and so far, it looks like it is just one long corridor that seems to extend for a little bit. Um, both Echo and the Arcane Eye, which I'm assuming you send forward down the corridor, they notice oh, that yeah. there are many points where the corridors would turn off, but they have long since been collapsed, or they lead into empty barracks that have long been destroyed and abandoned. Uh, there are parts where there are flickering lights. You come across a section, a T-junction of a corridor where a single purple light is blinking, like just casting the whole area in like brief moments of purple-hued color. Uh, there are vents that are steaming. Um, you can see grates. Uh, the floor itself appears to be like a thick metal grate and each step that you take as individuals leaves this heavy sort of like clunk, clunk as you make your way down. Any lockers? Yeah. Uh, no lockers so far. You do see Echo and um, Arcane Eye as they pass one of the barracks looking inside. There appear to be foot lockers, like little chests and trunks, um, things like that. Most of them open. Um, you don't see any bodies or blood. Mm. Just mm. Mm. empty. Uh, Tiangong Nova, you can feel itself pulling you towards this shard um, somewhere deeper. Uh, closer to the the front of the ship, uh, or what you assume is the front, anyway. Mm. Tian Gong, the ultimate Brookstone. Yeah. All this time, the long con. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the so I for just for my benefit, are you guys just kind of like slowly following, sending the arcane eyes out to scout, and then moving along as you find places to go? I feel like. At least Lucius yeah. would be mega tentative and wait for any intel from Sentry or Quill before moving okay. forward. I might well, also keep messenger have... ringing, seeing if Thalia responds. Sure. So Thalia gives you a report. The first couple of times, all you get back is oh, wait, like I a can't. shit. <laughs> you can't, but somebody else can. Whoever does messenger, you just get this occasional sort of like, shit. give me a second. Uh, and then after a while, you eventually get... Right, yes, we've managed to um, we managed to get away, and we've we've hidden ourselves in the in the debris field for now. Um, but this thing, I mean, I saw it shatter one of those larger glaciers with just a with a swipe. Yeah, I wonder how Thalia is. Everyone, <laughs> you say that out loud. <laughs> yeah, whilst I wonder how Thalia is. Listen. Thalia is. Thalia is. Thalia is. It just echoes down these like empty corridors, bouncing off the crystal walls. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Muted Gaby. That was really um, that was really loud, Kim. That shush was, was really was loud. loud. <laughs> um, pops. Can I have everybody make a stealth check? Stealth check. And then I'll describe what the arcane eye and echo see. Big stealth. fucking alien. Stealth. A paladin's best uh, friend. That's <laughs> really... Entry. I am the Entry. quietest Entry. person ever. You roll a fifteen. Ugh. Oh, okay. okay, thank yeah, you. Okay. You reduced <laughs> the roll. What did you already roll? Well, no, she rolls but with I, disadvantage. Roll a seventeen oh, and a nine. Dis- oh, yeah, yeah, nine. Good. Oh, oh, so I did, did, okay, because no roll to roll the nine too, and Lucius rolled and got a twelve, and then the yeah. quill got a thirteen. Um, oh, twenty-five, out. guys, you're dragging me down here. I was so too busy shushing Lucius. Slowly making your way down this corridor, your footsteps leaving these echoing clangs as they step across metal grates. Vents blast steam, white energy or gas kind of venting out into the corridors that you occasionally step through. But up ahead, the invisible arcane eye and the little metal sphere form of echo make their way through, and eventually the corridors lead out into a large open space. Gangways line uh, the sides. And you can see that it appears to be maybe some sort of hangar bay uh, for um, small vehicles. Some of them look to be almost like little wagons with large round metal tires or uh, wheels, sorry. Some of them appear to be 
two-wheeled vehicles like bicycles, but uh, powered by Magitech, all long since degraded and corrupted, no longer really functional. Um, but many of them still lay in their base. I mean, you never know. But one thing is clear, and that that is in the center, there is a single round disc that has been laid out and is projecting a blue and purple field um, up to the ceiling. And hovering in the middle of this field, you can see what appears to be a uh, uh, an axe, like a two-headed axe made of the same blue and black material as Tiangong. And it is, the field pulses, uh, as you can see red and black tendrils of energy testing it. <laughs> Trying to reach inside, growing from these tears, these small red tears um, on either side of the room. But the last thing that Echo sees before there is a flash of light is from the darkness it sees what appears to be nine red lights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one of them blinks and Echo oh. is disintegrated. And that's where we're going to end today's episode. What? what? We got to finish up! Okay, finish up! No, it's been Nine Echo's lights, Yeah. Nine yeah, lights. Yeah, so that means it's going to be a Beholder. Faro's Dawn! Oh, Which no. could legit TPK us. Ah! Oh my god, <laughs> well, half health. Casey, if you roll half as good <laughs> as you did today, we're good. Well, we're obviously not, not then. No, but. <laughs> the... Challenge ratings are challenge ratings, and if I didn't think that you were able to fight whatever monster could be in here, you are assuming it is a beholder. There are many things that can disintegrate enemies, um, but Mark, I would never put you against episode. something I don't think you can beat. That was really easy. I should really up the difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says he literally one round that away from a TPK. He literally said that to us. <laughs> that was oh, really man. easy for you guys. Yeah. I really misjudged that. Horrible. I should really make it more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, uh, that is the end of today's episode. Uh, we've got a little bit of time. We're going to read out some stuff, but I wanted to say, how did, did you guys enjoy that episode? Uh, was great that a episode. fun episode? No. Yeah, that Loved was so it. No, that was really good. No. Did you like the no. uh, big frost frost snake? No. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it's a good one. All of it. So like the, cool. the, the, the straight good RP. Snake. Yeah, the, all the little bits, like the commune with uh, Prime. That was a really good moment. Very well described. Well done, Mark. Uh, just the yeah, whole good, chase good through the, the reveal of this whole area. Yeah, really I like cool. I like the big yeah. chase. Yeah. yeah, like it felt uh, like so much more pressure. Fun. Yeah, like yeah. It was, all it was the also it was, um, we've well. done things like we, we've done stuff like skill skill challenges before, but I wanted to try one where I didn't tell you exactly like the DCs and yeah. what was going mm. on to see if it made it a bit more tense. That's very cool. Um, I used a mechanic called Clocks from Blades in the Dark, so I was tracking some stuff. Oh. But um, no, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. It was a really good one. I think you guys did some really good RP at the start. I really liked the Thalia Nova conversation. The commune with Prime yeah. was really good. Um, Quill using divination. I hadn't expected yeah. that. That was a good kind of throwing oh. me on the on the spot. Like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, I right. need to come up with something. Um, and now I'm glad. And the fact that Katie, you completely, you and Kim, sorry, completely clocked it of like. Guardian, Siaska, Guardian, clear its mind. Yeah. Bam, you were like straight on it. I was like, very Because, yeah, yeah okay. it was the clearing its mind thing that I didn't like. Yeah. Cause, no, didn't understand. You were like, clear mind. I was like, that doesn't make yeah. sense. And then yeah. um, it might make, it also might add some little weight to what Century's message from Root was, was about remember our purpose and mm. protecting creatures and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I yeah. think it was a good one. Yes, no, that was a great bit. Um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I'm glad you guys had fun. <laughs> no. uh, whenever I do new stuff, I like to check in and make sure you guys had a good time. So, um, always yes. good. All right, uh, let's quickly let's wrap with I, I think I preferred that you... skill challenge way than previous ways. Yeah. yeah. It felt like. Yeah. It felt more of a like a team work Immersive. kind of effort. Yeah, and, we could yeah, help. Yeah. We all had bits yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a bit more work on my part, but it was like um things like failing to do the engines. Um in fact I'll just show up to the camera. So I had like this. So each clock would get filled in if you so navigate was if you succeeded on helping oh, navigate. Cool. Alert cool. was if you failed at something, I filled in a box. And if it reached for 
the serpent would have the the frost watcher is its name would have known where you were and it would have come after you and then the ship one was basically the same thing of you had to get four checks to kind of get it back into working order very um, cool but yeah it That's just ended awesome. up being that you guys got enough checks to navigate to the the ghost the the graveyard basically um, nice. so yeah very really cool. fun right we've got five right, Tommy. minutes to reach it out so hey, take it away. Varys. Donation, no message. Thank you very much. Uh, Dragstar, just a message to say thank you for playing my music at the start of the episode. Uh, during lockdown, making music has been one of those things keeping me sane and high rollers has inspired some of my work. Well, thank you very much. I very much enjoyed it. Dots to dots. Missed last week's stream because I got caught up watching the first Lightfall campaign. I took your advice a couple of weeks ago and have been in contact with people about playing some D&D. So excited. Best of luck. I hope your games go Yay. forward and I hope you have a great, great time. Yeah. Your wadi, 18. All this talk of hair. I got my hair cut on yet. I got my hair cut on yesterday and donated all 12 inches of it to make wigs for the people that needed them. Nice. Plus, nice. Having awesome. my, Good on you. My gemstone dice drive has been an amazing week. Well, thank you very much for the donation and amazing nice. work on donating 12 inches of hair. God damn. Yeah. Uh, Mudkip. Damn. Tom, Tom and Ree, it moi, the one. The only, the supple, and of course, the servant of chaos, and the numbers 1702, or was it 1704? It's me, <laughs> Mudkip. So, you know, as we're on the, this wavelength, look out for that yes, yes, no, yes sword thing in Jenny and Matt and Troot. Thank you, Mudkip. <laughs> nice. Um, Thanks, Mudkip. Brian Indigo, uh, Quarter Hundo, I've got good news. That gum you like is going to come back in style. Brian Indigo is giving very cryptic donations and they terrify I know what they mean. Um, I know oh what God. they mean, but you are an uncultured youth, so you watch nothing but cartoons, so... <laughs> I don't understand. Sure. Yorkshire Dave, here, by gum, mark your naughty, lovely, devious genius. What a belter. That giant <laughs> astral snake thingy with bro bloody brilliant storytelling. And Drop's <laughs> comedic timing is literally perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. You're brilliant, Bobby Dazzler. Thank you very much, Yorkshire Bobby Dave. Uh, X one four one X Legend thirteen oh four. Hey, been DMing a game with my friends using the Horde of the Dragon Queen as a base for a homebrew campaign. I was wondering how Mark kept track of the Broken Skies movements and how they got their contacts. Mark, you're a huge inspiration for me. You say it in twenty five words. What? No, okay, don't then. <laughs> <laughs> I, kept no, I, I can barely life. come up with shit on my own. Like it takes me weeks to write stuff. I can't just come up with inspiration. How you stuff. kept track of the uh, the blah blahs? I can't remember what you said. Lightfall? <laughs> I don't remember. It was like fifty billion years ago. <laughs> okay, in that case, uh, Kenku noises, ice, ice, baby. Dun 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 dun. Over Keen Gale with a very generous donation. Hi hi rollers. I just wanted to give a small gift for the entertainment you've given me. Hope you're all managing the pandemic okay. Thank you very much. And the same back to you. I hope you're managing it as well. Um, we managed with Lord D &D. Yeah, Lord Zintac. Hi, Rollers. After about four weeks, I finally caught up on all of a rose, and I'm watching my first episode live. Welcome, friend. Uh, might Thank have been a week job. or so sooner, but I slacked off. No, dude, you had a lot to watch through. I'm, I'm impressed you managed it. Um, Good job. Yeah. Alec, 25, with a quarter hundo. Vod Goblin here. Just wanted to say... Thanks for all the laughs and good times. Keep being awesome, guys. You too. Thank you very much. Lord's Intact again. Continued from the uh, last one where they slacked off. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean it that way. I also want to say how good everyone's hair is looking today, both new dudes and old. I'm, mine is old. Anywho, got more <laughs> to say. But I don't want to take up this whole feed, so I'll be back next time for more. I look forward to it, Lord's Intact. Thank you very much. New Alex. Thank you. New Alex with a quarter hundo. Great stuff. Adventuring in the belly of the beast. Well, nearly. But watch them corridors. They'll kill you as soon as look at you. <laughs> um, True. True. And one last one from New Alex again. All beholders. They'll kill you as soon as they look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Quite Thanks literally. Everybody. Quite literally with a beholder. Got one um, oh, here. Nice. But yep. it's a hundo from oh, Johnny H. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Johnny Thanks, H Johnny. says... Can't often watch live, and I've fallen behind on the last couple of VODs, but still want to say I love you all. I've even started playing D&D online with some friends in the UK. Distance doesn't mean much, uh, so much if everyone's remote anyway. Truth. Yeah. Uh, we make Truth. it work. Yeah. Uh, you guys can too. Connect, play D&D, &D, have fun, make the most of this pandemic, for sure. 
For sure. Yes. Wash your hands. For sure. Um, Thank you. Uh, we everybody. Go on, got Kim. some gift subs from D Miller, 1841, Cooper Orc, and Nearer Shed, who is not pronounced Nearer Shed, but that's what you're going to get. Bye. That's what you're going to get. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the gift subs. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for the donations, the subs, just checking the stream out. Don't forget to like spread the word. It's the best way that you can support us. Get people to come watch Curse of Strahd. Get people to come and watch Erois. If you have a favorite episode, just throw them into it. Just be like, just watch this one. Just watch this one. Start Fine. on this chapter. Uh, yeah. And then explain to them. Yeah, and then we've got some ideas coming. We do have some recap ideas that we're, we're looking into. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully that'll get Surprises. out soon. Maybe. But yeah. We will Recaps. be back on Thursday for Curse of Strahd. Well, Tuesday, in fact, for the potential finale of the Chaos Twins playing Alien Isolation. So you can come and watch that madness <laughs> yeah. on Tuesday. Finale? Yeah. Thursdays, maybe. They think they they think it will I be. Don't, they think they will be. So yeah. I think you're nearly as close as you no, think you are. It's a <laughs> With big game. We'll find game, out. That game also has recaps. recaps. It does. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> we will find... Uh, you've got Strahd on Thursdays. Um, if you want more D&D stuff on a Tuesday on High Rollers, yeah, that's on High Rollers D&D. If you want more D&D stuff also on a Tuesday after Chaos Twins, or normally actually they're still going by the time we go live, uh, but there's also Knights <laughs> of Evening Star, which is a new US D&D show I am the DM for. So it's got Mika Burton, it's got Anna Prosser, it's got Nate Wants to Battle and Shady Penguin. Um, it's like a kingdom management game with set in like Arthurian Knights, Cormir. Um, come and check that out. That's on the D&D Twitch channel. You can also watch the episodes on VODs. Um, you can also catch all of us on our own independent streams, like Kim streams, restreams, Trot streams with Hat Films. I haven't really been streaming that much. Tom doesn't do anything. Uh, Katie's too busy. <laughs> but the others you can all watch. Got full-time um, job, soz. Full-time job, son. <laughs> Tom does But everyone else, go and check out. Nah. <laughs> Tom shit. Um, check out wow. everybody's wow. personal Twitch streams. Uh, wow. And we will see um, you next time. That's it. We're going to go for Tiny Teams. What's up, Kim? Yeah. Tom's missed a donation from Nightshare, so he is shit. Bye! Please watch Tiny Recaps on Yogs. Bye! <laughs>